So since there's no town uh, accountant, uh, there was no way to find out how much are in the set size. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of flying by, uh, um, what is it, flying by wire? Is that the expression? Hello. We just started. Um, all right. The total CPA fund balance is two million nine hundred nineteen thousand two hundred twenty-five. The outstanding authorizations, when we reduce it by the outstanding authorizations, it brings the balance to one million eight hundred sixty-nine thousand five hundred thirty-nine. Uh, have they received the? Uh, oh, the um, the town. Contribution was uh, two hundred seventy-seven thousand plus a little bit, and eighteen thousand dollars in interest payments. The state uh, was one hundred fifty-six thousand seven hundred forty-four, a fifty-six point six percent reimbursement rate, and the total available is two million three hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred. But it's tricky because some of that's in set aside, so we can't use it for everything. So that's going to be like the tightrope act. All right. Any questions of? Uh, oh, the um, and I messed up the t approximate total requests because I forgot to take out the Russell School. Uh, I'm doing my best. All right. Any questions about any of that? Just for the new members, um, the CPA is a gatekeeper, basically. Um, uh, for the C, uh, CPA, the use of CPA funds, people make presentations to us based on their ideas, and we try to work with them to get it to um, uh, conform with the law. Sometimes it's tricky because the law like, changes. Um, uh, but if, but if we turn them down, then they don't get to go to town meeting, right? If we can we can change it, we can turn it inside out, we can give the money to somebody else, we can put limits on a project, we can do whatever we want, basically, to the proposals. The only thing we can't do is approve them. Uh, only town meeting can do that. Um, the select board ever, where are they in that? Uh, they really aren't involved directly. Okay. Okay. Where is the select board as advocates. advocates. And we can speak to it. We can't really, we don't yeah. have any, you know. Yeah. Authority, so to speak. Right. Yeah. That's one of the great things about CPA, I think, is that it makes a, a second power center for people to come to if they want to do things. So it used to be if you went to the select board and they said, no, you were finished. Now you can come here. Of course, the other issue is, you know, CPA passes these projects and they don't get done. <laughs> okay, so so we're limited in that, in that way, too. Um, should we... Oh, so usually we present the projects, we talk about them for two weeks, and then we vote. But now it's all compressed. So we're going to think about it for a week instead of for two weeks. Usually CPA business is done by now. I'm on to other things, mm -hmm. as, as we all are. Um, all right. Um, Just, I have a yes. question on yes. um, the outstanding. Is there a time limit people have to do the projects? Or is it we started implementing a rule that if you, you had from when it gets approved to the end of the next year to access and use the money. End of the calendar year? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's what I think. Now, sometimes we've gone to the next town meeting. Okay. But, and then if something happens and the money doesn't get used in that time frame, town meeting, uh, the applicant can ask for an extension at town meeting. Okay. That's Through the we, CPA committee or just Well, they separate. don't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the CPA has to vote on it for, to do an extension. Uh, we'll I don't know. They come back before us. For an extension. Well, they ask for And then we get the vote. And then... It goes to town meeting okay. to get approved. Oh, so we might want to look at that because it's on the warrant for the schools. Right. Well, we have two. We have two extensions. We have two extensions. We're going to be working on. Okay. Between yeah. this week and next week. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, all right, so let's see. Let's get to the projects. Should we do? Um, where's my list? Let's do park and rec first. All right. You were you were last last meeting, so you're first this meeting. Okay. There's a seat here. We'll say one other thing the select board does. We appoint two members to CPA committee. So that's where we some right. have Act some right. authority. Right. Actually, the three, because three, there's three okay. at large. Yeah. yeah. Is that the, so is like that Mary, the, we just the latest one? Thank you. Last <laughs> there's been two weeks ago. I forget when it was. Yeah. Yes. There's, right. been, there's been a little friction, but we're trying to. Uh, no, you can have that. Okay. Just stay with the Do you want to do the pavilion yes, first, or do you sure. want to do the? Uh, I can do the pavilion first. Start, start, yeah. start with the easy one. The easy one. You think that's the easy one? I don't want to. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the easy one. No, you don't think so. Right. Um. All right. Don't listen to me. I'm just the chair. <laughs> Two years. Extensions. This is the. So it's just the one front sheet on this, um, and then attached to it, I I did um, <laughs> three estimates for picnic tables just to get an idea of how much the average metal coated picnic table would be. Um, the what the park and rec is requesting is um, in total eight thousand dollars, but from the CPA six thousand dollars to finish. Uh, the lighting, electrical, and um, six or eight picnic tables, depending on how much we could afford for the pavilion. Also have Kim here who can speak to the electric and lighting part of it. Just to bring the new folks up to speed on this, um, the PTO had uh, approached parking <coughs> Uh, to uh, support them for a this pavilion that's being built that was constructed over behind the uh, elementary school because uh, um, Park and Rec is an established organization and they needed a, sp a sponsor essentially. Uh, and given the venue and the potential for use for not only the school but for the community, in recreational sense, the commission and the director supported that. And uh, it was under the uh, guidance of the building inspector um, on his own time, Mr. Nyhart. And uh, they've done quite a job getting it close to being finished. But uh, as with many of these projects, sometimes they run out of money, and they ran out of money for trying to do the electrical. So that's the uh, Mr. Nyhart, you want to speak more to that? So what happened was um, there were two things that uh, brought it slightly over budget. Uh, the first was uh, the slab itself, the concrete slab. Unfortunately, I do this one. The pavilion at the elementary yeah. school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is at, at the elementary yes. school. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's not not at the Centerca uh, Park. No. no. That's, 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 that's the best part. Well, yeah. No, that's part that's of the best. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They have they have two that they're doing. So, so just wait. So uh, the first overrun happened with the slab. Unfortunately, uh, the grading was miscalculated slightly, and uh, we had to, at the time when pouring concrete, uh, we came up very short, so we had to get a whole new truck uh, to finish off the, the pour. The other thing that happened was uh, we unfortunately got caught in the tariffs. Uh, with the metal roof, and uh, that went substantially higher than we had anticipated, uh, substantially 25%. So we were there, we had to pay it. Uh, and at the time, we, we, we have a lot of the electrical done, we have the wiring installed, and uh, what we're looking for is a switch, we need some switches, and we decided to uh, do a little bit more lighting to, to um, 
to allow further use of of the um, uh, pavilion. So based on talking with the electrician, they had recommend a better lighting scheme for us. So we thought, well, let's see if we can get it through. Um, and everybody agrees upon it and we'll do it. If not, we'll pull back to our first thought of putting just one light in. But we want a little bit more than just one light at the top of it. So it's being used quite a bit, even in its condition that it's in. But we'd certainly like to get some lighting there. And um, so it can be used at a more, more time during the day, day and night time. Do you have a breakdown of how much is the furniture and how much is the electrical? Uh, I think the 2000 we're asking for 2000 for the electrical. And the, um, six thousand. the, pic, the picnic table is 6000 They generally run around nine, nine. Really a good quality picnic oh, table nice. with a resin uh, uh, finish. We're not talking wood. We're talking a metal or a fiberglass with a resin um, um, finish on it that will last forever. And they run around the 900 to 950, 960 each. I just gave three different company estimates that we kind of did use before. I have a couple questions like the uh, picnic tables because you can move them. Can we, is that okay under CPA? No. Fixtures like bleachers, tables, I don't think is allowed. Yeah, well, attach them to the yeah. concrete slab. You know, it's no, even if they're permanent, permanent structures are not allowed. So, movable bleachers are allowed, okay. but permanent bleachers are not allowed. Oh. So, okay. so movable things good. are allowed. Movable things are allowed. Yes, yes, good. right. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was backwards. <laughs> that was backwards on that. It's so confusing, and it's changed too. Like yeah. I said. So the second thing would be, my question would be, the lighting. How, I mean, I was all for the pavilion, but really how much do we do at night? I thought really most of them are for games or things and it's during the day. So do we do anything at night? I mean, we don't have out, so we can't play games outside really because we don't have those big floodlights to allow for night games for soccer. But So I just didn't know, would we be really using it too much at night? As you know, soccer season gets curtailed um, in October because of the, the rapidly, you know, earlier and earlier sunsets. Yeah. So what this uh, additional lighting would provide is a, you know, a little bit of an extension of that part of the year, that beginning of the year and the end of the year when you're, you're still, when it's nice enough to be outdoors, but you're, um, you're fighting with uh, an early sunset, the six o'clock. Well, I agree. I mean, it wouldn't be not bad if you had the, the big floodlights in here so that they could play at night, but... Yeah, I think this would be for but, post, uh, post But because we don't do that, I just didn't know whether you'd be really using it too much, the lighting. Mm. And how are you going to turn it on and off from the, from the if, if it's in the school at night? No, the switches actually would be outside. They would be in a, um, a key fixture. So oh. uh, whoever needs to use it, they got to sign up anyways. They get oh, they the do. use of opening it up and okay. closing it. Okay. So what's the, it. what's the CPA request? Is uh, The total budget is $8,000 estimated. And you're asking for $6,000? And just want to make sure I understand it from CPA. Is that correct? Yes. The PTO has offered to put up $2,000 towards this project. Okay, and now, and um, what I was wondering is, is there a budget involved with, for electrical usage? You know, because uh, if you run the lights, it costs money. So is that built into the school's budget? Is it built into Park and Rec's department, or what? I think if somebody's going to want to use it at night, that opens up a revenue source for us. We could rent it, we could, you know, if it's going to be something like that, if it's a soccer thing, then that would be in the soccer budget. If it's a baseball thing, then... And the lighting now is going to be all LED, so the actually wattage... Uh, that's yeah, it'll be very little, very little bit, slight, but... slight, so... Yeah, but there is a cost involved. There is a slight yeah. cost, of course, yeah. but it's going to be so minimal. 
the issue was putting it up, uh, putting the money up front to get LED lighting in there. So there isn't a lot of. Um, it is um, very expensive up front cost. Yes, it is. That's mm -hmm. why we we were asking what we're asking for. And the hope is that you know, we'll be turning some of that money back to you. But um, we prefer to go a little on the high side and give you money back than come at the low side and find out we're short again. So you're asking for $6,000 for the, the seating, for lack of a better term. Is that correct? The picnic tables. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's picnic tables. And the lighting will be provided somewhere else. You can look at it that way, yes. Well, no, but I just want to make sure that I understand it. That's we all. put them together as a $1,000 bill, and 2000 will be paid for by um, what Jenny's been able to obtain. We had my son go to, my nephew went to the park and rec camp there. He's 18 now, and he was a kid, and if it rained, they never called every parent, and you had to run over and pick up the child an hour mm -hmm. into it, two hours into it. So this is really nice to have this facility so that the camp cannot get canceled if it rains or thunders. It, really. mm -hmm. it was nice this summer. I mean, the one difficult spot being that we had to load my car with cables, drive them over, unload right. the tables. So this will be helpful this summer to have tables there. Yeah. We can get that done. So this will... This piece of the chairs and lighting will be used by Park and Rec and people in Hadley beyond their use by the elementary school. Yes. Right? Okay. Any what was that again, Andy? Just to use in Hadley? Well, that. Not really. It's not. It's not just for the elementary school. <laughs> Park and Rec is also going to use it. Park and Rec is going to use it, and the community can use it. Whatever that means. That means private party, maybe? Yeah. Well, it means if your kids are playing in the playground, <coughs> you can sit at a table in the pavilion. You know, there's a park near where my son lives in Washington, D.C., and you can reserve the area for birthday parties or stuff like that. I'm not sure if they charge or not, but they might. But, it's, you know, there's a sign up something because people may want to use it for private things too perhaps if it's available but you're not suggesting that no but it, I don't think we can deny it that's open for down because the road of too. CPA yeah. money even if UMass kids want to use it hmm. yeah and and the funding request would come out of the wood set aside the parking lot uh, yeah I guess okay no just to the new members, uh, this is part of my speech. Everybody asks for a certain amount of money, then they come back for more. The tables were not even included, but we thought it would be a nice thing to add, so they come back for more, come back for more. This is not good accounting for, for the monies that we uh, give out. No, I don't think it's, it's a good way to handle things, it just because you want some more. Okay, we'll get some more. They should come in with a full project, and that's going to be it. Maybe you ought to figure it out. So, well, we know that. I'm, I'm going to vote for this, but nevertheless, I'm just kind of making my editorial comment. Well, and, and as we all know, that over time, costs change, uh, even in, in larger scale projects, such as uh, over at Hopkins, you know, these types of things that their uh, adjustments have to be made because. Uh, there are unforeseen things uh, in the case of the grade or the tariffs, mm -hmm. which impacted the budget there. Um, so it's not unusual that it, it's, I, I agree with Joe that it would be nice if um, not only were these costs accounted for, but, you know, we're, we're reluctant to say add a little bit to it. But, you know, experience when the building committee would tell you that you needed to add a, a little bit of buffer to it because, you know, the building costs rise considerably. It was at one point calculated over 2% per month. Um, so, you know, if you, and given the speed at which we can make decisions and get disbursements out there, um, sometimes those change, you know, you look at an estimate that's done in November, and by the time May, uh, May rolls around, the numbers could be different. Mm -hmm. 
and, you, and if it's a substantially large project, you could wind up with a shortfall. And you know, what do we do then? Do we, you know, it's, it's, if the money's still available, it's logical to come back and at least try to uh, finish the project as, as uh, planned. Well, we've got a lot to do tonight, so yeah. we just want okay. to move okay. things along. Does anyone have any other questions about this particular project? This is when the when it comes to park and rec, does park and rec have to approve it also? No. Um, for that set aside for the park and rec, or it's just a CPA? Another, another good question. We like to have a vote from the committee mm -hmm. that the set aside is linked to in favor of okay. uh, the particular thing, but. That's just our tradition. It doesn't have to be. Okay. The money has to the, <laughs> the money has to come out of the set aside first. Yeah. Right. That so we sense. have to attach the whatever it set money is in the set asides. Okay. Then it'll come from the general fund if, if there's a difference. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we don't know exactly how much money's in there, but we know it's more than eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. Any other questions or comments about this particular one? Um, so, who do you have supporting you? Is the school board um, voted on this? Has it been, been a formal part of that? Well, there was a, there was a uh, commission vote on this. And then the PTO talked and got back to me with that amount. So, they're just waiting to hear back from me and what they need to do next. Okay. Well, the more people you can have supporting this, the better you'll do at town meeting. Oh, it's such a small amount, I don't know if it'll be a problem. All right. Mm -hmm. Comments from the audience? That's what we like. <laughs> Did I give you enough time? All right. Moving on to the next one. Going to vote on this? I don't think so. I think we'll vote next week. We'll vote next okay. week. Okay. Yeah. If the, the idea is that to have one meeting present the articles and then gives us time to mull over them, read them, and right. come up, and then the, we vote on them the next meeting. Right. It gives you time to change them if you want to change them. That came about because at one time we had a, we got a, a piece of paper that said <coughs> we want X amount of money for an APR, and we voted on it 10 minutes later, and it was just like, holy crow, that's a little quick to spend a lot of money on. I have a quick clarifying question. So how do you, if it goes to town meeting, sometimes it has to like go to town meeting so that we can vote on it on a poll. What is that threshold? So like, would this be approved at town meeting or would this oh, go to No, that's a good question. The whole point of the CPA is not to have to go to the town one vote. Okay. The town meeting is enough. Got it. Otherwise, everything would go down, just like it always does. Well, that has to do with it. You only have to go to the voting if it's going to affect the tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yes. So if it doesn't affect, Thank you. It, yes. if it's not an override and it's not going to affect your taxes, right. then what's voted at town meeting is good. Thank you. And it's 50%, right? <laughs> <laughs> the vote. For, for town meeting, right. right. So you don't need two thirds. <laughs> right. Simple majority. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I am back with the um, proposal for the fitness court. Uh, the one thing that I did do was amend the amount because I thought perhaps we should include the concrete slab um, just after thinking about that after our last uh -huh. week. Um, so I changed it to 110000 rather than 100000 just after our discussion last week. Okay. You want to describe uh, where is it going to be located? What it is, so, where it's going to be? I did take some pictures at the Turka Park to uh, kind of show the area where it would be. Um, this is from the parking lot here, and if you walk down the path, you can see uh, this is the center sidewalk of the Turka Park, and then there's a wide open area here where the court would go. And if you turn around from that sidewalk and look back at the parking lot, this is your view here. And that's kind of that, um, I guess, it's not really fence, fenced in area, but there's like a block around it where there's potential for a play structure at some point or um, where the Where, where, would where is the, the new detention pond? Uh, it's to the left 
of this. There's one there, and then there's another one of sh more shallow. That one is on the other side of the parking lot, between the parking lot and Breckenridge. That's the main detention pond. Then there's a uh, hollowed out area because that one didn't work. Well, the, the other one is, is, I think that's the one Jenny's referring to, which is just off, off the screen here. It's the little area there. That's kind of, in, in my mind, that's kind of the bigger one. Yes, it is the bigger one. Right, and then the smaller one is the other side of the parking lot. Like right over, here. yeah, over on this side here. They're both. Close. There's 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 two. three detention ponds actually, on either side of the parking lot, and then there's yeah. a sunken in area that is uh, uh, goes to the north. Well, um, the ones that, and I have some different shots of the overhead night. We had the, the schematic of the plan that we provided to the select board. Um, that um, the one retention pan, uh, plan is, uh, excuse me, retention area, the bigger one, is to the west, southwest corner. Correct. And that's the one that was there's, overflowing, one so they had to create it. Yeah, and there's one on each side of the parking lot. That's right. A little one, and then the bigger one to the east side between the parking lot and Breckenridge. That one's got the um, uh, drain head sticking up in it. So there, are, but that's it. There's there another any, area that's indented. There aren't any more to the north. But there's a playground. Is that uh, a playground surface area? Maybe that's what you're thinking about. That's, that's a playground this, surface. That's this part right here. Okay. There used to be a tennis court here, right? Wasn't kind of about well, well, farther back. Yeah. That was its own drainage then. This is. The gift that doesn't keep giving is the gift that keeps asking. Originally it was going to be a park that was going to have venue for concerts on the side hill. And obviously they were talking about two, three hundred people, so there was no parking place there. Mm. Then uh, it came back and so they requested more money for revising it. Then there was going to be a basketball court. And uh, so they didn't come back for money for the basketball court. They came back for $30,000 because of the stump dump. Everybody who's over 40 knows that was a stump dump, yet they wanted $30,000 more. Then they had to go before the planning board because of the parking and the drainage. It was a drainage problem, so they had to usurp a lot of the area, so they wanted more money for engineering studies for that. We're up to 300000 of money that's gone into this Saturka Park already. And I think it's about time we've got to say halt. Every time I say that, I get seem to get outvoted, but I don't think I've s seen one car a week there. Well, except when they're sliding on the side hill. Nobody uses it. There's no basketball court. There's supposed to be a pavilion. There is no pavilion. They run, they're running out of money. They keep asking for money. So I think it's a time to call a halt. If this is a fitness, is, find some place to use it that's a little bit more appropriate. What is a fitness court? So this is a 40 by 40 structure on a concrete slab that has um, seven exercise stations that are all used with your own body weight. Okay. And it has, it has the components, uh, there's actually a page in here that'll show you. Uh, everything is written on the court, or you can download an app if you are tech savvy, that you can um, read the directions off, right off the app, and it will help you um, guide you right through it but you don't have to um, use any kind of weights or you know, be trained in it, but it does offer the ability to um, have training sessions. So we could train people to be teachers in it, and then they could hold classes and things like that. So, so is this going to be solid, like cement? There's a cement slab on the bottom, and then the, there's a page in here that explains the tile that goes over the cement slab. Okay, so do we have to go for so, drain, drainage recalculations now, because it's no longer the soil is not 
impervious, or it is impervious. So, where's the water, extra water going to go? Are you saying there is an extra capacity in the original? Well, I don't, don't know. If it's, uh, if. So this is a 40 by 30. Is this, excuse me, is this going to be under the purview of the park and rec? They're going to uh, maintain it? Or is there, who is going to, does, do, does the equipment stay up all winter long? Yes. It just stays there? Yes. Okay, if, so if we get a windstorm and some of it blows away, if there's damage done to it, who gets the call to fix it? Is it going to be the park and rec? Is it going to be the DPW? Is it going to be the board of selectmen? So it would be park and rec, and uh, my hope would be to sit down with Chris Pokefer to work something out with DPW. Right now we have um, just made an agreement to work on the mowing and the event support with them for Zaturga Park. So. so right now it's in the DPW's budget? Is my understanding that correctly? Just the mowing. Yeah, they Just have, the they have the mowing. And, and the support that if we had any kind of events there or anything pick like up that. Trash, that kind of yeah, pick up trash and things like that. It was not mowed, Edwin, this past summer, so they had to not only mow it but haul the grass away. I, no, I, that's one thing that is a concern, and I just, he got a chance to stand on the soapbox, so I'm doing it now. And it's always a good thing because the CPA provides money for projects that the town should be doing anyway, but they just don't, and so they come to the CPA for funds. Yet they say, well, we want to fix this up but there's no money to maintain those projects once they're already fixed. So I've had people come up to me and say, you're doing a really good job, but it's costing the town more money because now you approved a project that is gonna cost me more money because you just built something or you fix something or you put something in that it's gonna take maintenance for that project. So, Nobody's, so, uh, people are telling me, why should we even bother doing a project if it's going to end up costing us more money to begin with? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm just getting yeah. at. I'm not trying to, you know, I, like I said, he's going to sit on his soapbox. So that's, that's my big beef mm -hmm. about it. We, we all get a turn on the soapbox. Okay. Estimated number of people would be using it per week, per day. In how many months? Uh, as far as people that would use it, I think that I couldn't estimate at the moment, but um, I did do a survey of the park and rec, the people that use park and rec currently, um, and out of 81 people that took the survey, 71% uh, said that they would use it. And I think around here it probably could be used maybe eight or nine months out of the year. Mm -hmm. See, it's got a 10-year warranty, so that's... Mm -hmm. Oh, you do. I was looking for that. A 10-year warranty on it. Satisfaction yeah. guarantee. And it, <laughs> it's not something that they, people would have to have a membership for. So the total budget is 130000 Yes. And you're getting a $30,000 grant? Yes. So then, that would be 110, but the total budget is really 140,000. The, the cement slab is not originally put in that, so. Okay. Yeah, and that's how much it, the, the whole fitness center costs, 130,000? Yeah. Without the cement slab, yes. Mm -hmm. So it costs 140 Correct. with the cement yeah. slab. I should have admitted that. I, I would argue that it's not a grant. It's really like 22% off from the manufacturer and the installer. I did have to fill out a grant for it. <laughs> right. But a, a grant is from a third party. Right. So this company manufactures and installs these, and they contacted you, and you thought it was a good idea. 
Well, look at Route 9. A lot of people think there's a good idea with fitness. <laughs> well, <laughs> Your memberships are not cheap. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, just saying. Good, well, no, thank you. For, I, I was going to say, for this amount of money, we could provide the minimum amount of people who could be using it for 12 months of the year for guaranteed subscription to one of five fitness centers we have in town. I'm not sure that's approved use of CPA funds. <laughs> no, I'd have not. to call the, the coalition. Have programming there? We could, yeah, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that is a, it's a, look at how many, it, Route 9 has so many of those fitness places, and they're all doing this type of thing, like that, that, I mean, they're all into the, using your own body weight in this group thing, and it's that orange theory, or whatever it is, that's doing this, and the, the 45, whatever, that they're doing this, so I think that there's a lot of people that are out there that are into this right now. Mm -hmm. And if you could do it outside, that's kind of a cool thing. But I think it's a good way that you would be able to, I would think there would be a lot of people that would want to have some type of a, um, someone out there so that you could get an income off of this. Right. Does it limit the use? I mean, 40 by 40, is there still room there to do other things? There's still a bit of room there. Yeah, right? at the park. Yeah. So it would be probably... <laughs> the construction man probably should ask for a letter to uh, from the engineer who was the Italian bond or no it was Berkshire design Berkshire design to see if this is going to affect the drainage at all sure yeah I think that's a big question mm. because that even the big detention plan overflows. Any other questions or, or comments? Do you have any sense of how much is in the 10% park and rec kitty at this point? Um, well, we're going we're gonna to vote to put $42,000 in it. So I know there's at least that. And there's, do you have other, does park and rec have other plans in the works for like other meetings that might um, want these funds as well at this point? or? I don't understand. The funding, the funding would be available out of the general fund. If, 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 it's the, over. if yeah. the set aside is all used up and there is zero money in that account. Yeah. Well, I guess part of my that. point is, you know, say there's 300000 in the set aside for mm -hmm. the park and rec, this would use, you know, uh, third of it, yes. 30 plus 6. There's still plenty in there. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't think that. there's that much because it's, they, they share a set aside open space and that's our, oh, okay. our biggest. Oh, okay. For the, uh, yeah. they can use, use it up almost I'm every time. next yeah. week. Oh, okay. It's open space right. and recreation and, 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 the, and we've done a great job of, of the, working the open the space side of the okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, hold on just a second. It, any other questions? The only other thing was is um, if it is a big, ends up being this great thing and you have classes there and everything else, is this the right place to put it? You know, the only other question, because of parking. You know, the only, we, I mean, we do talk about where the fire sub substation is. Mm -hmm. it, and, and if that has more parking there, is this, is this the right place to put it? And if we do vote, you know, for this, is it is it tied, are we voting for the project or is it going to be tied to Zaturka Park? I'd like to vote for the project. I think it's a great project, but I don't necessarily know if it's the, you know, if there's drainage problems or if there's parking problems. I like the, I like this idea, and do I have to tie it to Satur Park? That's what it says on the application. But if we remove the Saturka Park, can we do it and just look at it? We we could, as a committee, decide where this is going to go. Although it seems like a little bit of an over. I mean, I like, I mean, so Turk Park, because it's, it's not being used for anything, right? And like Joe's, right, nobody's really <coughs> using it. So if this makes people use it, I just don't want to say that we're going to. I think that was my, my original thought was it's, it's open, there's space there, yeah. we redid it, let's bring something there. Like, let's put something there that will bring people there. But, it, I mean. But if we got stuck, <coughs> and you're in the middle of, you know, wanting to do it, and you, and all of a sudden now, you realize, oh, I can't do this because of a drainage issue. Oh, I can't do this because 
you know, uh, we're going to be having these classes and there's not enough parking. Well, now you're going to have to go all the way through the whole project again and get voted upon town meeting just to move it to somewhere else. There's seven parking places plus one day handicap or eight. There aren't any parking. Seven or eight. I don't know. So you're suggesting that the Warren article not say where it's going to go? Well, maybe we should. Well, I don't know. Can we do that? Is uh, is that illegal use of the CPA funds? I thought they needed an address to tie the funds to. Oh, really? I thought that was part of the discussion. I last. thought that was. Okay. Part of that. Yeah. And, yeah. and you had mentioned that had, it couldn't be a permanent structure. Well, this is where CPA is very bizarre because the concrete pad is not considered a permanent structure. Okay. Which is very weird. Because <laughs> that's pretty permanent if you ask me. But that's, that's, what, that's, that's what the, uh, the coalition said. Okay. All right. Um, so it's a CPA eligible. Any other? No. All right, well, sometimes being chair is no fun. Um, and I tried to warn you about this project when we met, but I guess I was too subtle. Um, because... Uh, we spend more than enough money on Zaterka Park. And I think if this goes before town meeting and you say you want to put it in Zaterka Park, it's going to go down. So I would really have you consider putting it in a space where it will succeed because not enough people are going to Zaterka Park. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I suggested uh, somewhere near Hopkins Academy so the school kids can use it. Right, we talked about, I talked about it with them yeah. as a, sec, a possible second site. Okay, um, so I think the location of the Durka Park is a, is a, is a big mistake. Um, I also think that it's a lot of money. You know, we have a lot of building and big project renovations, and if you had come to us two years ago before you worked here, you know, you might have sailed right through. But I just think that it's too, it's too much money. Um, and that uh, you're not going to get the support for it that you want. Regardless of where I put it? I'm not sure if that's going to make a big enough difference. Because um, it's a lot of, you know, like, yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, a lot of money for a fitness center that, you know, I, is that a priority? For town. Well, Edwin for some talk, people, Ed, you know, it well, is a big Ed, thing. Edwin talks about, you know, uh, wants and needs, you know, mm -hmm. and we're, we yeah. have so many needs that you have to take a hard look at the wants. So I'm not telling you to withdraw it. I'm just saying, I'm trying to be less subtle. Well, do I come next Monday or do I not? Uh, well, we're going to vote and, you know. I say you do. I say you should. Yes, yeah, you, you should come. If you feel you strongly should. enough, you should come and. You know, put your best foot forward and hope for the best. You know, I'm just want to vote. But I, I like, I want to see a project succeed. So that's my opinion, my soapbox. Well, I, I have the mixed feelings of this Turka Park because it's such a waste sometimes, you know. I don't want to see anything else go in there, but at the same time, we and the only, money. The, yeah, we've already spent so much money there. Sometimes you have to cut your losses. The only thing you get is sliding. <laughs> <laughs> well, the park is nice. You know, I favored the the expenditures. You know, I go there. I walk around. You know, snowmaking machine. We could <laughs> please, please. But I do like this. But I think idea. people are continually punishing with. Park and Rec for something that happened. That would do well Years at ago. the junior well, high that, that, that was a, and yes. again, that was a that was an abs a, a third party that you know initiated all of that. That was the friends of of it's a Turka Park. But you know to, to, to discuss your points, um, you know I would have thought the original Zaturka Park wouldn't have passed, or the First Amendment, or the Second Amendment. But they've all had support. So in yet in this time when we're spending. Uh, for the other services in this town, the library and senior center, and the other 600 groups, this is one that is outside of those camps. It's a more of an active, physical, uh, fitness-oriented uh, thing. And as we both have 
as, as many have said, that is a, besides dentists, that's one of the more popular things that's on Route 9. Mm. So there certainly is um, a fair amount. I mean, I wouldn't have thought you would have expanded the, the climbing wall. You know, and yet there, it, you know, there's a second building there at the, the yeah. rock wall place. Yeah. So I don't want to go at this with my blinders on thinking that, you know, gee, it's just like the Turka Park. I didn't think it would have went. But every time it's gone through by, the, but by the, a, a good the, majority. The, the neighbors were all for it. The neighbors were here. They were going to contribute half the money. We probably got one fiftieth, less than that, of the money. They were the ones that were voting for it. They didn't want to see a house there. So well, that yeah, when was, you look at the voting numbers, though, you know um, this, uh, uh, their doc, they're, they're, there's pretty, there's been fairly substantial support. It hasn't been, you know, fifty-one percent. It has been pretty. Uh, all the votes have been heavily weighted in favor. Um, so. Again, I'm thinking that this type of thing, you know, if there was a lot of alternatives to Zaturka Park, unfortunately, the, the, you know, the remaining open land that Park and Rec had purview over is now a parking lot between the senior center and the, uh, in the, in the back half of the library. Um, there is, you know, what's a little that is under contention now up by uh, North Hadley Hall. Is to, to, it's obviously, since the town's divesting, it's not something we're going to put any money into. So that leaves the school property. Um, well, how about the how about you got the pavilion going in over at the elementary school? Is there room next to the pavilion since you're going to have lighting and tables and everything else? So you have to be over the age of fourteen to use it. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like based on the zoning, yeah, that's like the that's only residential point. only area, right? It feels like a really good spot to me, like for that community to use it. What, it's the Turka Park? Yeah. Well, how about the the all the property we have over at um, the new sub fire substation? Because there's going to be a yeah. ton of parking there now. Yeah, I mean, that plan, I don't think it's been fully DPW developed. DPW yard. There, there's talk mm -hmm. of, a, of a substation uh, for the DPW. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, you know, I don't think that the rest of those, I mean, right now, that people are clamoring for that space. I don't think that plan has been fully developed. Okay. Um, I mean, certainly Park and Rec would like to be part of that plan and get, regain some of that playing fields that uh, were lost um, that are non-school property, so you can have things that, uh, that you don't have to avoid the school schedule with. Um, so we can have regular planned events that we don't have to navigate those times. I don't want to take go far too far down the road. Getting back to this project, though, I, I, I don't think we should sell it short either. You know, that uh, if, it, if it gets shot down, then maybe it gets shot down. Uh, but I, I've been surprised before at time meeting. You know, one thing, I, I went to many baseball games, Little League games at the Jerka Park, and you just held your breath because the balls would go on the road and the kids ran after them and you got too many cars there and we saw accidents happen as people, parents backed out and people came in and we can't have too much parking there. So this is a very individual thing. This is a way to use that space where you wouldn't need a whole bunch of cars all at one time. I mean, that that seems like a good way to use that. It's not a group thing, more of an individual thing. You know, I kind of disagree. I think it's the wrong place to put it. I mean, if it were at the school, you know, the coaches could use it. And the kids could use it. Well, the high, that would have to be the high school with the over 14. Well, that's right. Well, yeah. that's, we're talking where right. the new ball fields are. Because yeah. we own the land. Right. We don't have to buy new land. Yeah. can include that. Well, hopefully we've given you something to think about. We're not, uh, we're not punishing you. <laughs> no. You know? No, we're not. If you think CPA committee is rough, wait till you go to town meeting. <laughs> Okay, anything else you want to, did you have a comment? Yeah, a couple. Uh, certainly, as we've seen, there's been quite a number of different types of fitness centers coming in, and they're heavily used, which surprises me, but it's my age that I can't believe that all these kids go to these things and spend huge dollars to go to them. Uh, I think we have to be a little open-minded on who, you know, we might not use it, but I think the younger people in this town need something like this. Now, as far as where it goes, that there is discussion on that. 
parking generally is not an issue with things like this. I, uh, you brought up um, 45 down, down Route 9, Orange Theory. People that use those things come in, in groups. They do it together. This is, this is something that I think will be extremely popular to the younger people of town. Um, and it could actually benefit Zaturka Park getting people there. If, if, if something's there, they come. And maybe if they come, they'll see the other benefits of Zaturka Park. So I wouldn't sell Zaturka Park short just because we, in our age group, see it as a little different and we spent too much money on something. Because we're thinking the old days when we were at the ballpark, how we used it. Let's, let's try to be a little bit open-minded, say this is a good plan. She's come up with a, a place that she feels it might be the best place for. It. Let it go to town meeting floor and see. Just like Andy says, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised on how many people might vote for this. I, you know, I don't, again, don't sell Zerturka Park short. I think it really would enhance it. But I think it might be a good thing. So, so we've got to be open-minded on these types. Well, you're asking us to abdicate our responsibility. We have that ability and that's our charge. Just because we're making the wrong vote, you would like to see if the town meeting could have the vote. I think we have to make a decision once in a while. I'm you not saying you can't, Joe. What's wrong? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm voicing my opinion. So I, I okay? totally agree, so but you can see the I'm way... I'm not talking about your vote. I'm just talking... Please, Joe. You're yeah. always jumping down my back on every single thing I bring up. Please don't do it on this. Yeah. Period. No. All right. Take a deep breath. Everybody's okay. Yeah. Any other comments from the audience? No. We'll see you back next week. Yep. Thank you. All right. What do we do with the agenda? Right here. Yeah. All right. Look a window preservation. <clears throat> you don't have to stay if you want to go. Go ahead, down again. Yeah. So this is actually a two-part presentation. I hope it's appropriate. You guys can decide whether there's uh, the window and there's two iron brackets that we'd like to get money. You have some iron? Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, there are two. There are two. There's two. Yeah, they're a little different. Oh, oh. okay. In the back of the one, you'll see a picture of this window. In the back of the other, you'll see a picture of one of two iron brackets. Both all these there's things were on the on the hooker school. They're, they're together. So you guys all recognize the window. It sat above the front door of the hooker school for 100 years. It's pretty cool the construction. You can see the handmade frame and the handmade money of the, all the glass and all that kind of stuff. So luckily we were able to save it. This is the inside. You can see still in pretty good shape, the outside not in such good shape. So we've talked to a uh, professional window preservationist up in Greenfield who has all the credentials, Old Sturbert Village, Deerfield, all that stuff. <laughs> and the price you see on the application is what he estimated. So the, the one cost. that says historic window restoration? Yeah, that's the one that has this picture in the back. Oh. Up, up so the if you could look at that one first, please. Yep. Window okay. I made the word window bigger. I got it. Okay. So for the window we're looking for, uh, so the library trustees did vote on this. Okay, so this is different than what you sent. It's going in from the new library, so, David? So. Right. So we're trying to install this. Was that? Yes, and so, so the idea is to install the upper window in the new library and an interior wall, as you'll see described in here. So we think it was a little display of the Hooker School and a little discussion on the history of the Hooker School and maybe on the window restoration and stuff. Uh, all right, so real, real simple. We won't come back here again for more money. Well, uh, the question was, people came before us, you didn't, but for some historic preservation in a room in the library and under no circumstances is that new construction 
could have historical things done to it. Andy, remember you, that you came up with that ruling or found out that ruling from I'm Saginaw? Sorry. I'm sorry, I was Fine. distracted. So you're well, wondering whether we can use Remember it? when the uh, library came in, they want to do a historical room, they're looking for money, and then they want to do a, a rain garden, they're looking for money, and right. something right. else. And it said under no circumstances should historical monies be used for new buildings. And that was, I thought, that was you quoting uh, Stuart Saginaw, uh, who is well, kind of the guru who has... Yeah, n not exactly, but... but are pretty close. So this is not for new construction, this is for saving this old window and installing it. So if... Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And the same with the two iron brackets, which are the uh, other package of paper you have there. There are two iron brackets we like to have uh, refinished. The uh, trustees did not vote on the iron brackets. Uh, a chairman of a certain committee in town... So that's the $750? That's the $750, right. And that's just a wild estimate. So if you want to leave that for another time, we can leave that for another time. Is, the, window, the window is why I'm here. What's that? Are they, are they going to be separate articles? No. They the, the, uh, the iron it's entirely what, however it's you think it should be handled. We can leave the brackets out if you think it complicates things or uh, is in any way. We can talk about it. Yeah. The brackets are kind of beautiful, and people who see them say, oh, definitely, definitely. You've got to save these and re you know, repurpose them to be a decorative item on the wall. If you put them together, they look like a heart. Or they could be uh, brackets to support uh, bookshelves or something like that. The window is the big project. It's pretty amazing. It's 100 years old. Um, the idea is either to embed it in one of the walls or put it on top of the wall. If there's concerns about it being part of new construction, then we would just do a pedestal for it or um, stick it on top of an interior wall. Or so it something. wouldn't actually be a window? No. I like the idea of it being between two rooms uh -huh. so people could look at each other or you know something like that. But. Uh, I've talked to the uh, building manager, Carl Ferguson, who's putting up the library, and the architect, Phil, who's uh, design, designed the library, and they both think it's cool. They haven't worked out exactly where we go yet or anything, and they don't want to unless there's money to do it. So it's up to you guys, real simple ask. So we save an old window from the Hooker School and have a little display or not. If you want to throw the brackets in, that's great, too. The brackets are pretty cool. Any questions? You said the bracket number was like a guess. There's two brackets. Yeah. Oh, that? Yeah, that was just for sandblasting, priming, and painting the okay. brackets. It'll probably be less than that. Okay. So this would be the historic preservation set aside. Right. Um, so you're asking for the entire, um, <coughs> all the money for the, for the project. There's no contribution. Uh, the contribution the right now, I would say, is getting it out of the wall and saving it, which if we'd done that as an independent project, <coughs> would have been very, very expensive. Brackets, I don't think, would have cost anything. But, um, yeah. Also, it's such a small amount. No, I'm, I just, just want to make sure. If you guys want to do half, I suspect the library can raise the other half. Or, or uh, if we go over, I think we can raise whatever the overage is. It is a neat thought to have something in a hooker school. You know, that, that's something people, I think, recognize. Well, you know, some of us who walked around and looked at the hooker school and all that, and we tried to find anything that would be, uh, and this is pretty much it. The brackets, they're not as unique as, or as uh, unusual as this is. But uh, they also saved the um, kind of Greek-style frame that was around the exterior door. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their plan is for that. I don't want to get involved with the <laughs> project. Maybe the architects are going to surprise us and stick it on the building somewhere. Yeah. Or build a, uh, a workout center with it somewhere. Like, uh, <laughs> 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 Any other questions or something? So all I did was got them to save the window. I helped take, you know, ask them. They did that out of the goodness of their hearts, basically, when they were taking down the building. They, they could have said, hey, we can't deal with, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to break. We're going to be open. Instead, they... Gave me a call and said, hey, come on down. There it was. So I thought it was nice of the, uh, the demo people and the building people to uh, help us with that. With that. It's, it's a beautifully crafted window. I wonder if it, if it sold as an architectural salvage, I wonder what it would be worth. Yeah, I keep it in my barn, so if you guys don't want it, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, town property, absolutely town yeah. property. So that's all I got for you. If you want okay. to save the window, and uh, we'll, we'll also donate Edwin is a uh, display, a nice display about the upper school and, and the window and anything else that the town would like to see. Otherwise, upper school is like gone. Uh, yeah, well, that's... Uh, There's a video. I've had, you go to Hubbard School? Yeah, yeah. I, I went to so, Hubbard School. I've had people <laughs> ask me, what the hell are you saving a window for me? Tore down the whole building. The building was beautiful. Why did you save just one little part of it? They'd like to erase the memory, or they feel bad about the building coming they down? They feel bad, bad about the, the building, building, building coming down. Some yeah. of the library trustees didn't want that building to come down. Right, no, that's just, I'm just... Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, but... All right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Mary? Anything? Thank you. Okay. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about the um, the brackets. Yes, sir. Um, you ever watched that show, uh, the Picker Show? No. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, there are people who uh, make their living reselling this kind of stuff. You know, they find it in old barns. And oh, I saw, I saw a show on Detroit. It's a uh, huge warehouse. Yeah. And, and the first thing they say is, don't sandblast it and repaint it, because you're destroying the history. Yeah. And so if you're going to display these in the library as art, you clean them, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We're open to that discussion. Right yeah. now, I didn't bring them, because they yeah. leave a little trail of rust. Yeah. 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 So think about that, and come back next week. Joe, you cool with this? Uh, you would like to challenge the project at all? Or? No. No? Okay. I think the brackets hanging as art in the library would really be... I was going to open the door for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But if you feel negatively, tell me so I can bring it back to the trustees. That, you know, but if you think there's support, then I'm going to let... I don't, I don't need a formal thing. I know it has to go to town meeting, but um, mm -hmm. we are in the process of building a library. So yeah. if, uh, mm -hmm. if you think you're not going to support it, I'm no, supportive yeah. of the project, just not the sandblasting. Of oh, the brackets? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe there's a way of sealing, just, you know, like, coating them with some clear coating so you can see the rust and everything, but not boys and kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Got you. it. Bye. Thanks for coming. All right. Okay. Any other comments or questions about that one? So no. where is the, that's the historic preservation case, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would come out of the storage center. Yeah. So this, that hasn't been run by the historical commission. Right there. I don't know. 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 Uh, has to look at something as a historic relevance for CPA funds. It's not on the historic register. Okay. Okay. All right, that brings us to the Board of Health. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bernard, Mr. Bernard, Mr. Bernard, describes the budget estimate, the timeline, and then the last couple pages are pictures and descriptions from the vendor um, that we got an estimate from that could do the project. So one thing that I think a lot of us recognize, or maybe not because we are really um, well able and able to move around, is that when we go to town hall, we have this great ramp to ac access the building, but there's no what, there's no push button entry for anyone who has um, a mobility disability. Mm -hmm. uh, really being able to include those members of our community, guests who come into our community to improve the access of that building, so that all can be able to enter it, would be one something that would be really terrific to do. 
um, us with the Board of Health, we did submit uh, because there was a available grant funding with the state through um, disability inclusion under the commu community health improvement initiatives. However, um, there was limited funding this year. We weren't included, but we got a lot of great feedback about the um, application that we did do. Part of this project, well, the majority of it is that push button entry. What we also would really like to be able to do um, is kind of assess the other areas of our community, other community buildings, schools. Um, I'm just kind of blanking off the top of my head, but other areas that could possibly have limited access. Town buildings. Town buildings, correct. Thank you for that. Um, so for the door, um, so we are seeking, initially I didn't adjust the application page which initially was for $4,000. Um, because we have anticipated funding available um, within our Board of Health budget to try and support this project as well, um, with being able to do the portions of the project that wouldn't be able to be funded through CPA monies um, because of limitations with the law um, after having some great discussions about how to guide this project forward. Um, we know that doors, in, especially in town hall and other town buildings, are going towards um, automatic entry with fobs. Uh, so that was part of the inquiry um, with the budget that we had go in. Um, the door secure with card reader, which does add an extra $150 cost. Uh, but we also we wanted to be thoughtful, so that would be included in this request at this time. I was always under the impression that any time a municipal building was built nowadays, it would be ADA accessible. I wasn't aware of that. That's not necessarily true. Yeah. But that's that kind of like, what's going on here? I thought it, uh, all the new buildings that it were built were accessible. Yeah, I it's think ignorance that's... Ignorance on my part. Yeah, I think... Um, Wow, that's a great thought. Uh, I mean, when was, I don't know the exact year that ta our town hall was built, um, but I also know that. 1841. Thank you. <laughs> it's there. Um, but I mean, Hooker School, which we just demoed, was built in the 1950s, correct? And didn't really have to terrific. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 20s, I apologize. My history is. You're thinking all. of the extension? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there was a committee that handicap committee, uh, Jerome Yzerski, and I think Joe Fitzgibbons was on it, and that designed that, uh, that walkway. The rail. But now you want to update it. Yeah, because really, uh, if you're in a wheelchair and on that ramp, Unless Jen Saunders sees you waving at her through the window to know to go outside and open the door, independently, it's very challenging to access and open that door. Hmm. A, a question for you. Yeah. Um, I see here you specified a single door. I'm talking about mm -hmm. that. Now, of course, there's the vestibule door mm -hmm. on the inside. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're opening the first door using this, what about that rather large swinging door that's inside the vestibule right outside of Jen's office? That's a great question. I didn't really think about that. Um, I do wonder if maybe that could, door could change it to be a double swing, possibly. I think that would be something to talk with the... Well, yeah, I don't know if you could have like a swinging in front of Jen's office, but I, you know, you might have to. I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity here for a second opener. Sure. Because, I mean, I think the door swing there is the way it is because of the, the restroom in Jen's office. Mm -hmm. So it's really only one way you can swing. But you've got, it's a rather substantial door. And you don't have that side requirement on the side of the door. Yeah. <coughs> Those type of doors should have a, uh, a button. Yeah, button. You're absolutely right. And, the, and, and one other, maybe more of a clerical question. It says here staff time 100 hours at 2550. So you, you expect. I mean, you were going to talk about it, but the, the clerical side is the, uh, the extension of that would be $2,550, not $1,850. So I apologize. So, but the 
you want to talk a little bit more about that 100 hours? Yeah. So I had edited this, which I think I did in the narrative. I apologize. I do this all on my own time. As you know, the word of health, we don't have to, it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. No, I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm, perfect, I'm, I'm, and that's why we're here to help you with the proposal. Right, we're running yeah. it out before. So, I mean, honestly, I think we don't have a good assessment of um, our ability to have disability inclusion in town buildings in Hadley. Um, I think there's a lot of potential needs that we're just not being able to see. And the staff time, which yes, I miscalculated on this, I apologize, um, would be to be able to do thorough disability assessments through the partnership with DPH to be able to look at those and analyze the data to try to formulate plans moving forward and other goals. And, and the buildings that we're talking about specifically, obviously not the new ones under construction, uh, do you think the public safety complex needs much of a review? It's a 20-year-old building, 22. They have buttons. They have buttons. Yeah. The so only the access you can have is to the front room, so. You cover so that, that would lead the to the only thing that, could, that, that, that I think that they've done is they've lowered the window. Uh, they added a lower window for him, but it was in an accessible chair. Mm -hmm. uh, so. But it should be evaluated. It's a great thing to, to go through. We, we haven't done that for so long. Right, so you got, you got the public safety, which might need minor update. You've got yeah. town hall. Um, and Even thresholds are a problem. Right. Are you, are you including the schools in this? or? So in terms of the town assessment of all the town buildings? Well, that 100 hours, yeah. Yes, so it was to assess all town buildings. DPW, of course. No, so, so. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> that's a landmine. <laughs> but it's it's in a landmine and it's an uncomfortable landmine. But I think it if we're doing the right thing to try to improve access so that everyone would have the opportunity to enter those buildings, I think it's the right thing, mm -hmm. even though it's perfect. This feels like really important. Like we should just like buy it tomorrow. It seems crazy that we have to vote on it, mm -hmm. but that's. Not well, we have to, the uh, town meeting has to approve the expenditure, that's all, or the governing body of the town. Now, I have a question. So, yep. way back when, we were going to put new doors at the town hall, front doors, right? Mm -hmm. And they got money for that right. through CPA. And mm -hmm. they had to give back, and it wasn't approved because Correct. the doors. So you've got a mind like a bear trap. Right. The doors were not, they, I don't know, they weren't the, they they, weren't the you, right doors, and they, so they, was, didn't, they didn't pass the historic part. Well, so well, what well, makes well, this pass historic so and those doors don't? For the doors, the money for the CPA was to restore the existing doors. People decided they didn't want to restore the existing doors, they wanted new doors. And that's why that project didn't go forward and why the money was returned. These projects are studies and also implementation to improve the accessibility of the existing buildings. So I would argue that it's different. I think that, I think it's really important. I, I'm curious how it falls under CPA. Um, is it is it the historic preservation to increase to public access to, to historic buildings. buildings? Okay, I looked up the. Good. I think it's. I think it's very. Uh, if, if and, you're, if, uh, to, to finish your point then on the historic buildings, mm -hmm. so that would exclude the public safety complex. It would exclude the DPW. But it would include perhaps Goodwin Library if that's reused. It would include Goodwin and, and Town Hall. And Russell perhaps if that's ever, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Right. I think it would be a really great opportunity to take inventory of what specific buildings it would fall under so that we could see it be successful. Right, but if the money's being used for CPA for that mm -hmm. uh, access to historic buildings, mm -hmm. then expanding it beyond that purview. Uh, they did have a committee, and they went through all the buildings a few years ago. Yeah. I think this is a good point. We're going to we're gonna need a list of the buildings sure. that you're going to yeah. take your And certainly that would modify. 
the amount of hours for the assessment. Um, so, any other questions? Or? I've been thinking a lot about this uh, this proposal, especially for the, for the door. Um, it's it's a non-standard space, uh, and so the typical application for this door opener might not work. Okay. I think he should get the installer out here to take a look at it because uh, it's going to be weird. Okay. Um, then there's the issue of the second door. You know, maybe you need two of these, which leads me to thinking that what you really need to do, in addition to having your own staff, is to hire an expert. Someone who can write a report mm -hmm. and say what each building needs dot by dot. Mm -hmm. um, because first you get the money for the plan, and then you get the money to implement the plan. Um, and we all want Town Hall to become accessible as soon as possible. But if they install it in such a way that the button can only be over here, but you can't reach it over here if you're in a wheelchair, then we've screwed up. Uh, and since it's a non-traditional, non-conforming space, the ramp isn't ADA, who knows what will fit where. Um, I think you need some expert advice. Sure. I'm not sure who you would go to. Right. And then I think... Can you think go to Tim? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know. what we do have the Unicall <laughs> consultant. I think this would be something great for the um, Board of Health to come in and talk to the Municipal Building Committee. We can then discuss it with select board. I think it's something that really needs well, to I be think done, and we could probably go forward with yeah, uh, using the on call. call. They do, okay. Yeah. Jerome Yazerski has been in a wheelchair for 15 years, 20 years. He makes every effort to get out and work. He's aware, he's aware of every nuance of the handicap accessible law. He works at Amherst College, and he, he would be a Good guy to ask. Okay. And he was on the original committee too. It's um so what I'm suggesting is that you expand the study and hold off on the mechanism until we're sure that it's gonna work. Okay. And I mean it's a lot to ask you to do in a week. Maybe Yeah, it's challenging just because it, I work full time. Right. I have three kids and right. Um, and, and I think Tim, take Tim up on the offer. You utilize the municipal building committee and, and the, uh, and the uh, uh, consultant resources that are already paid for. That's right. And if and if it's if it's too much, then we'll, we meet again in six months, and you can you can apply again. Okay. All right. Uh, again, we're not rejecting you. I'm just saying uh, mm -hmm. we want to really focus on what it is that you want mm -hmm. and to fund that. Right? Yep. So you get all the ducks in a row and then you get the money and it's no problem. Rather than, oh, you gave us the money but it wasn't enough and then we needed to do this and we should have done that and so on and so forth. Okay. okay. Any other any other questions? Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to talk to you about it, you know, about further. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh water testing? So this next one um, might feel like a um, familiar story. Uh, this is the Board of Health asking for CPA funding for all open recreational bodies of water in Hadley, which includes our um, watershed area and on the Connecticut River. It would also include our two reservoirs and it would include Lake Corner as well. Um, the DEP just came out with a list of grants that were funded for uh, water testing, occasional water testing throughout the state. And we, our jurisdiction outside of the Connecticut watershed was not included. Um, that includes bacterial testing. However, as everyone I think heard this past summer, the occurrence of cyanobacteria, which is a very toxic blue algae, blue green algae, um, is in our water areas 
and we've had to shut down those for public health concerns and risks. Um, so we have some quotes here as well as some pictures that were taken by me this past summer. Um, these are not just of Lake Warner, these also include pictures um, that were taken in the, on our banks of the Connecticut River. So that's what we're looking for. Is this something you're going to have to do every year? So, sure, I think Peter has been asking for that money every year. Mm -hmm. we, we've given it to him mm -hmm. twice. So, this should it not be a budget item by the Board of Health? This so, is going to be every mm -hmm. year? Yeah, so I think that's a great question. I do, we are asking um, for monies for this. However, there is a lot of concern that it's not going to pass. Um, there's other public health concerns that are, are also asks within the Board of Health's budget, which there's some hesitancy for, and a lot of other needs as well that wouldn't be able to be possibly covered by CPA funds for, to support the community with public health disparities. Is this under recreation? Is that uh, I'm not sure what this would fall under. That's a good question. Well, I mean, first of all, the, the reservoirs are you know, posted, and you have to get a permit to go into the, uh, the lower reservoir area. And uh, there, there's, you know, stuff that I believe it's no swimming, uh, you know, yeah. by, by humans. But yeah. lots of residents bring their animals there to go swimming. And um, is the is that upper reservoir that's off of, are, you, are you referring to the upper reservoir off of uh, closer to Hampshire College? Yeah. By Atkins is that Atkins. is that still on town property? The second mm -hmm. one? I think that's over the line. I have not specifically looked at maps. I was always told that it was still in Hadley property, but you could do that. And then there's also the Parker Reservoir, which is on town property, off Chimura. Okay. And I don't know if that. Is the one out behind Lash, I mean, um, Camilla World Pieces, is that on town property, Tim? Do you know? Which one is this? No, the one, no, the one that, the, that's off of Laurel. Old B&M. Up off of Laurel. Yeah, the old B&M property. The old B&M. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. Is that out by the, there's a water tower up back there that uh, town has. Is that? Uh, it's private property. That's but private. It's, a, yeah, it's in the town. No, but I mean. Is it, I, is it is town property or private is it lake, private? That's private. what he's asking. Okay. That's private. Yeah. Private. Well, I'm hearing that, that additional. But uh, yeah. Parker Reservoir is definitely yeah. on town property. Yeah. So thank you for that additional knowledge. So, Andy, this would be yeah. something that this is we got to call Stuart Saginaw and say, yeah. if yeah. this is a budget item every year, it's going to be ongoing. So, yeah. 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 we. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, do. that's. Yes. Yes, That's you can use CPA money to start these kind of projects, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure this is going to go over three years and mm -hmm. three years and above. Yeah, our our optics for it is that it's actually not the same project. The original project was solely for Lake Warner and also only for E. coli testing, not for cyanobacteria, and not expanding it to those other waterways that are available for recreation in town. So that's where we were coming from with the Board of Health from it. Um, and certainly any opportunity that we have to um, get our message out, communicate with the public um, about the challenges that we're having uh, and getting support uh, for public health needs within our community, we certainly want to be out there and talking about them and at least have the conversation, so I appreciate that. Okay, any other questions about this one? Okay, thank you. Thank you. What does that bring us to? Russell School. Uh, well, Russell we School's going to like so we go on. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> there's a DPW proposal. How about the old library? As opposed to oh, being a certain. The old library. Yeah. Is anything you guys cool. doing presenting for that one? We're here for the good one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do that one next.
you. And we'll have 10 minutes. But I just want to just want to start by thanking you all for all the work on CPA and everything you guys do. Um, you know, I just want to say that from the select board, CPA funds are a really great value for the taxpayer. We are paying CPA dollars from our taxes every year and getting a return on that investment. I think last year, what did we get? 30, 40 percent back on our investment? 56 percent. 56 percent. So it's a huge benefit for taxpayers when we're looking at projects. What I was hearing through a lot of this meeting is people being concerned about preserving historic buildings, um, accessibility in town, all these issues. You know, this year alone, we are selling one historic building, tore down another one, and then we have the Russell School, which is getting to the point where it's in need of repair, and those repairs are really, really expensive. And so, this project we're here to talk about now, the Goodwin Project, I feel like it's a great opportunity for us as a town to preserve a historic building in town and work together, CPA, Municipal Building, Select Board, on a larger project that requires restoration. You know, I don't see taxpayers necessarily wanting to pay an override for the Goodwin or for other building projects, and so CPA is a great resource to get funds to fund this project. And what I see this doing ultimately is providing a municipal building in town that's fully accessible um, and is specifically for municipal use. I mean, that last thing that Emma was talking about, even with doors getting into town hall that are accessible, you still can't really attend a public meeting in that building because there is a lift, but it's not really all that functional. And a lot of people with disabilities in town avoid town hall because of that lack of disability, or accessibility, I'm sorry. And so I'm hoping with this project with the Goodwin, it is something ultimately where we have office space in town that is accessible to everyone and meeting space that is accessible to everyone. So with that, I want Tim to just dive into the details of the project from the municipal building perspective. So uh, certainly the select board tasks the municipal building committee to first look at the building and see what we could use it for, from the library to what it is. Uh, certainly we looked at the structure itself. And, um, it's, it's in great shape. So the thought is, what the departments could go in there had a lot of extensive discussion with that. We focused on, on three, and uh, we brought in our consultant to uh, go through those departments, to ask them what they needed, with the primary focus, if they go over there, to preserve what we have. We don't want to destroy some of the good architectural features within that building. And he has come up with some very good ways of preserving what's there, but also being able to utilize it in the next chapter of the building. Uh, we could dub it as the new town annex or whatever we want to talk about it, but there are three departments we're looking at to use in there. And also to use the first floor primarily as meeting space. Okay. Uh, that's the main focus. So, what are the major problems with it? Certainly, it, it, the major one, which we've always talked about for a while with the library, was the ceiling and the electrical. Okay? Uh, it needs, it's unsafe, it needs to be upgraded, it, uh, it's not a tube in some areas, which uh, is not permitted anymore, it needs to be removed. The ceiling needs to be taken down because it is now um, detaching itself from the floor system above. It's the first floor ceiling. The first floor ceiling or the second floor floor system. Uh, so that's what the main focus is. Um, to get it back to uh, a safety standard for its next use. Uh, so 
Wasn't, wasn't that there, already done? I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't well, mean yes, it was, but that was for it to be a library. Mm -hmm. So the architect so didn't plan just... how to keep it be a library. And now it's not going to be a library. <coughs> the first floor is going to be meeting spaces, primarily for um, a lot of the meetings that we have uh, right in the town hall. Here's a primary example, as, as uh, Christian said, that second floor is not very accessible on the, at the town hall. This brings some of those meetings over into the good one, where it's going to be more accessible for everybody's use. Uh, we can have a, a lot. We'll have a larger hall to have larger meetings, and um, so if you read through it, it breaks it down into the several areas of what we want to try to do. And we've done it into two phases. The first phase, which we're asking for right now, is to do the electrical system, the ceiling, do some type of um, cubicle type of spaces for the, the departments that are going in there. The primary reason for that is so we don't disturb the historical portions of the interior of that building, but still use it for whatever we look at for the future. The second phase is to make all floors accessible. Right now we only have accessibility to the first floor. Okay. I'd like to back up slightly on to, uh, from the phase two. <coughs> Fixing the ceiling, also what we want to do is, one of the biggest problems with that building is it doesn't have an accessible bathroom. What we're thinking about doing is putting in what we'll call somewhat of a temporary bathroom. It might even stay there. Uh, but in such a way that, again, we're not destroying the, the walls that are in there. It's actually built with, within um, and not touching those interior walls. Okay. Phase two, we'll have one bathroom. And hopefully we can get through all this stuff with the one bathroom for the time being. Until we get into phase two, which is what we'll call the North Tower, whereby we'll put in uh, a set of accessible bathrooms the lift, and a set of um, proper stairs. And uh, access will be from the north side. So those are the two phases primarily of what, and how we're looking at the building. Questions? Seems like you have to do a lift if you're going to use that building for yes. any public thing. And that's, that's expensive. Yeah. Well, the bathrooms are ridiculous. The, the lift is not a part of phase one. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Phase two was to get, get a, a, to a point that we can use that building right now for, the, for when, um, when, it, when the library vacates. So what are we going to do with it? Use it for office space that we desperately need, and we need a better a meeting room that's more accessible. I think the, this phase one will certainly bring that forward to everybody at a very, you know, when we look at these building prices and then what we have to do, this is pretty inexpensive for the amount of, the amount of work we're, we need to do to that building and have some really good space. So it's the planning board, park and rec, and the TV broadcast office, are those the three? So it's TV, it will stay there. It is currently kind of, on the third. Third floor is that what it is? We'll like take the upper the floor, top floor, and they want to stay there. Planning, uh, they they were visited on that. They they want to be down in the basement, which works out really good. Park and Rec wants to be there to utilize storage in the basement and to be able to use the we'll call it a large meeting space for some of their activities. Now, is the basement dampish? I mean, is that not? No, it isn't right now. Um, yeah, with the new drainage that they put in there, okay. it, it really, really cleaned up the okay. issues. Yes, it, before it was yeah. very yeah. damp, but that has dissipated with the new drainage. 
Yeah. Asking for the full amount, not willing to contribute anything towards this project. Am I reading that correctly? Well, we, I would say we, we're looking for the full amount, but yes. we're looking to work with you guys on this. What, yeah. what, do we, what do we need to do to work together to make this happen? And where, if there's some taxpayer contribution that's needed outside of CPA, mm. that's fine, but the taxpayers are already contributing to CPA. So yeah, we, yeah, we know that. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it comes out of what pocket, that's all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's all being thrown into a bushel basket and it just uh, when you take it out it's all it's all the same we get it we know that yeah the, the idea behind it is that the organization that is proposing this has some game in skin in the game they have some skin in the game mm -hmm. because I don't know how much money we gave to Goodwin Memorial Library when we were going to be the library but all that money is gone now is that what we're looking at? No, well, it's all no, the no, drainage. You put in the, the ramp, which will still be used. Yeah. It, it, no, the electrical, the money, CP money for the electrical work was returned. Yes. It was. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, and the one, ceiling to it. What would it cost to build new? How much is the substation? What? No. I mean, the, the senior have, center is, what, $3 million and the library is 7 something like that? Oh, I thought they were much higher. I thought it was like $8 million. Or eight, eight for the senior, the yeah. library, but we're paying half. Right, yeah. right. And the senior center is a good eight, nine. Oh, yeah, it is. It is like yeah. six. And then the substation is more like five. Four. Or two and a half. Yeah. I guess I should know all these numbers. I think they're I up there like five. Yeah. In that rate, that ballpark. Soon, soon we're talking real money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and for 1.4, you get three floors of ex accessible buildings with no parking <laughs> well we've discussed that with um, planning board chair already and how we can well that. as Jim says many times and Bill said one-fifth of the planning board yes. is not necessarily the majority it should be brought before the full board you're absolutely right and it will be and we you know we do have plans as well to do municipal parking possibly in front of the Russell School. school. Well, but see, I mean, there, that is we're here all part for of this. Yeah. I, I know, but and we know yeah, we once you make that problem. decision, once you make that decision, you've precluded the fact you, you won't be able to sell Russell School uh, because there won't be adequate parking. Well, so you kind of destroyed that possibility. So I think you have to work out some details before. Well, let, let's stay focused on the library. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what, what it would this be considered? Uh, I'm trying to find a preserving a historical building. So this would come out of the historical set aside mm -hmm. until there's no more money, then it comes out of the general fund. Yes. I have a comment on what you said it might be called. I'm but sorry. I have a comment on what you said it might be called, like the town hall annex or. Good one. I want to just say, Mr. Goodwin was a huge friend of Hadley. He's the reason the Hopkins even put money in and it was mm -hmm. the, it was named in his honor. I think it was yeah, stay good one. To stay good one. <laughs> good one yeah. building, right? Yeah. Um, I, oh yes, we're not going to get rid good of Good one was the trustee <laughs> that brought the money to Hadley. Exactly. You know? Yeah, he's Christian, his Christian. Hopkins friend. I do have a question that they, you know, that I know the treasurer approached the board about using future revenues and money in the bank to expand our our borrowing or our the available funds. Yeah, that was a teaching. Ex um, and yeah. well, it, it's. I mean, I, I'm definitely uh, behind the Goodman is spending a lot of time on the municipal building committee. But I see this as somewhat in the conflict of that that goal. If there's a 1.4 million committed to that building, that would take away a good chunk of our ability to uh, borrow against that future revenues. As the treasurer proposed. So I'm I'm sorry. I'm just trying to understand your question. Are you saying the, 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 if the, we were to the, borrow the select board you know, or yeah. the treasurer approaches to say that you yeah. have X amount of money already in the pot yeah. and you're going to get so much based on we could leverage that to we could leverage that to, yeah. to uh, turn it into another seven million dollars worth of yep. worth of projects. Well, yeah. It was just two million. I thought it was. Well, five. they said up to seven and oh, a half, seven, but that was seven point four okay. change. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it was close to seven and a half. Um, okay. 
I, I'm just trying to res resolve in my head how we would take on a large project like this and still consider that as a goal because that would this a pro a project of this scale would obviously take a pretty good this, fight. Out this of that project, project would be part of that fund that those funds in my mind is mm -hmm. you would leverage that seven point four you have in borrowing potential now mm -hmm. and take one point four off of that so you'd have six afterwards. And that's typically how we would do it on the town finance side. If this was going to be out of the taxpayers, just like we're financing these other buildings, mm -hmm. you know, it would just come out of that over X amount of years. You'd be financing out of the uh, and, and yeah, I would have to lean on David Eisenthal to know more about the mechanics of how that bar would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, to get the seven million, we needed to start with one and a half million. Yeah. So the less we start with, the less we can, the less we can borrow. Yeah, but that's. Well, right now we're just looking at after. phase one, right? Right. right. We're right. looking at phase right. one. Yes. Right. So does phase one make right. it usable for planning board, parking rec, TV office, and immediate yeah. space? It basically gets that side of the building in shape, good enough that we can use it. The wiring is good. All those kind of issues. Enough power. And then if we want to put in the tower, right. in the future affects that side of the building, but the rest of the building is minimally affected by okay. that construction activity. I, th I think there's some question about phase two uh, being CPU appropriate. Mm. But let's just focus on phase one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The, the, parts, the parts of phase one that concern me are the bathroom. I'm not sure it's an appropriate use of CPA funds, a temporary bathroom. But that would be the only accessible bathroom in the building, is accessibility yes. part of CPA yes. funding. But it's, uh, here's the opposite of what we talked about before, where it's not, mm -hmm. you're not making a bathroom that's there accessible. You're building a new bathroom. No, that's, but that, then we have to put it in an elevator. And then you got the catch-22 <laughs> right. in order to I'm get not, to the bathroom. I'm not saying yeah. you make the, the basement bathrooms accessible. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. I'm not sure that line item is, is going to go. It's going to fly. we we'll have to check that one out. So, so that's, a, that's a red flag for me. Um, the rest of it is upgrading, upgrading parts of the building that already exist uh, that have to be fixed for the building to be used. So um, I think the rest is okay. How much does the bathroom cost? Twenty-six thousand. Main floor. Okay, that's not the mechanical plumbing. That's separate. So it's the second floor through temp department. Mm -hmm. Is that what it? Is that where Main floor temp restroom. Is that yeah. something mm -hmm. the town could maybe fund separately? Right. The twenty-six thousand. Okay. We're only calling it temporary. It might actually be something that's permanent. Right. right. Well, you sure might not take it out. Right. But might that, that might not make a difference yeah. in terms of CPA. Okay. Right. Well, I have to. That's where we have to defer. Yeah. This is where we work together. Yeah. We figure out what we can do, what we can't do, and then we figure out an alternate right. path. I think know? the rest of it is okay. Does um are there like drawings of what the building's going to be like, or is not, that part of the architectural? No, process? because we're in such limited funds on the on call right now. We wanted to get. Good pricing to you. Yes, we're, we will be doing some type of floor layout and going through the drawing and doing a drawing package. We have to, to go out to bid. But right now, we just we needed to put something on paper to give you. It was a very short notice in regards to this, and this is what we have for now. But yeah, when, when, if, if we get the funding, we're going to go all out. And do have, a full package. Have you thought about a public meeting to present a plan? We could do a public hearing. <laughs> public hearing. I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, won't this, well, I mean, would you do a public forum before the town meeting anyways? With, right? We could talk about it then, yeah. Well, you could, Sorry. you could present it, you could have the drawings, you could, you know, take comments. We can't do any real drawings because we don't have the money to do it. Right now, yeah. Right. Well, I meant after. Well, it's usually we appropriate oh, the money yes. for the drawings, but you you seem to have found some of the money to get this together. The, that's we, the on call. Yeah, we use the on call 
money that uh, has been approved for the last few years to do what we're doing now. So we have one line item that we can spend off of with the with the approval of the um, select board. So see, we're we, down to very limited. It's coming out of the yes we're right building. Now. Yeah. See, we like a lot of detail in our committee. You know, we like to like see the, the plans and see the computer mock up and oh, yeah. look at the maps and that we would have loved to give you that. So, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and a lot of it's you, you know, know if we acted sooner we would have uh, suggested the money to do that right so you could have given us even more detail of it than you have here um, I'm not saying that's a reason to vote against it mm -hmm. I'm just saying the more detail you can give us the better right. oh, yeah okay. I agree and if that, if that detail will be part of the architectural services then I think that will help you in town meeting I have a question yeah. for you I remember seeing an email that you had sent around and it talked about both the library and the Russell School and it had to do with the deed restriction and we do it historical. Yeah. I'm listing it historical. I don't remember exactly word for word, but how does that work? Do they have to put spend some money and put some type of restriction on? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. So I don't know if there's a historical building restriction on the good one or not. But that would be a good thing to find out. And if uh, if it's on, it must be on the Register of Historic Places. Well, we could easily look. I, I would think yeah. it would be at the Registry of yeah. Deeds and just go but, on the Mass But if it isn't, then the, the Historic uh, Commission has to vote that it's worthy of saving. I'm Even as quite a sure that it's not. It's just a historic on the Historic Register. It's not like... That it's not on the Historic Register? It is on the Historic Register. Okay. Like, that's it. Okay. No D. Yeah, it's not right. the next level up. <coughs> well, that's the minimum requirement. Yeah. Because we don't want um, to use CPA money to preserve something and then have the town decide to sell it. Or tear it down. Right. Or tear it down, yes, thank you. Yeah. Here's, the, um, <coughs> here's the passage that Steward at the commission uh, wrote. So, Andy, be, before we do vote on it, well, that'll be next meeting, but nevertheless, uh, you can check with Stuart Saginaw because you did last time on the Russell School right. question, and well, here's, he was fairly emphatic about what yeah. he said. Here's, here's the deal with the commission. Uh, they've lost three of their four employees and Stuart's on vacation. So uh, I will write to him again, but we might be on a roll for this one. Alas. Uh, I sent, he said, um, I'm on vacation. Send me three of them. <laughs> so I sent him um, Russell, Goodwin, and uh, I forget what the third one was. And then I mailed out. I sent out, you know, what, how, how he responded. Uh, he was more concerned about ADA code and, uh, you know, having to bring the whole building up to code. Yeah, and to answer that question, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, that, that triggers all that, one of them is electrical. Uh, so those sort of things that, that if you re-roof, uh, is something that you don't add into those costs. But there are exceptions, we take all that out, we're still fine. Okay. The bottom line is, at the end, it will be fully accessible. We'll do it in phases. Just as long as you show that, it's over time. So uh, the code compliance triggers, um, phase one, trip it? No. Phase two? Yeah, well yeah. that pr yeah. brings it full compliance. So, so that's, okay. that's where it is. I mean, phase one won't trigger it. I mean, it's a gray area, what do you add? What, 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 do, you what do you value it at? Yeah. Um, well, and there's certain things on the construction that add to a percentage of the construction value versus yeah. the building value, and there's right. certain things on the construction side that go toward that, and other things that don't. So remember, you look at it over a time period of what your goal is, mm -hmm. and our goal is to make it fully accessible, putting in the elevator, doing everything that's required. So the end result, at some point, will be a fully fully accessible building. Mm -hmm. So we don't trigger yeah, everything up front. But it was a good question from 
from the state asking that because it is something that, that needs to be looked at. And, and I yeah, guess my, my final point is um, how are you going to fund phase two if there's no CPA money? Because people, <laughs> people are going to ask that. You know? Well, so here we're funding phase one. Yeah. So we can do phase two. Phase two may never happen. Phase two may never happen. But without that, what do we do? want to do with the buildings? I mean, I don't think we want to sell the building as a community. And I don't think we want to tear it down as a community. So at least phase one gets us to the point where it is usable, even though it's not 100% ADA accessible. code compliant. We can be accessible on one floor only instead of three. Yeah. So but it, putting phase two in will give us all three floors. I mean, yeah, if we don't get CPA money, we'll, we'll go to the town meeting floor and, and borrow it. Do something. But again, the bottom line is for a, a, a little bit of money, we get a lot of use out of the building, an existing building. And that I think that's what we, we need to strive and focus on. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments on this one? It's our big, uh, the, big the biggest item <coughs> at the Russell School. Then we're drawn. And then there's a second request for the study on the elevator. Yes, and this is actually getting um, architectural money uh, to do phase two. That's what that is. And Ellen Weinberg the library. is going to present that. On the old library, yes. So what, how much is that? I think the 25 dollars Yes, there's there's a separate... Like I said, I need money for the planning. And you guys don't have it in there. Ellen, Ellen was... To present this, uh, but okay. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what it is, and we, we can make copies later on. I'll give them an opening. Okay. I think I sent it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Alan, Alan Weinberg was going to present uh, to try to get twenty five thousand dollars to do the architectural uh, design for phase two. At least get something to show you guys and everybody else. What is phase two? What is it going to look like? Let's do a, you can do a sketch of what, what the tower would look like, how it would fit in, and uh, how, how it would function. That's what that money's for. I wish you guys had come to us and gotten this for phase one, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't in say you should have done it for phase yeah. one and then be against it when you're <laughs> doing phase two. Yeah. So, so it's a plan. Yeah. Money for a plan. And a lot of the stuff in phase one, or some of it, the electrical and the ceiling, those have kind of been in the ether for a yeah. while, even though, um, yeah. And unfortunately, and one of the reasons why we did pursue it back then, because the more we looked into it, the more problems we came up. That's why that figure is so large, because it's a huge problem. It, it, it didn't just encompass taking down a ceiling and ch changes on uh, wires around. It goes all the way back to the, the box. Um, all that's got to be changed over. The more we looked into that building, the more um, in the diamond tube that we found in the walls. And it's, it's, a, it's a problem. We're not supposed to be using a, a building that has diamond tube anymore. It's too old, it's too crystallized, it's extremely unsafe, and uh, creates fires. You don't have to do a sprinkler system? No. We don't. No, it's small enough that we don't. Yeah. Love to do it, but... Well, we would love to and would not want yes. to do it. <laughs> but that's, that's more a, cost. But yes, that's a big cost. More safety. Yeah. Yes. Sprinkler systems are not CP. <laughs> they're, 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 or parking lots. Yeah. Any okay. other questions? Thank you very much so for the, your time. Thank you. And thank you, Andy, too, for delaying the CPA or pushing out the CPA schedule so we yeah, can get so this really in. Helped. And we just didn't have time, so week. thank you. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> sorry about last week. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was uh, under so nobody's control. So one of you will come back next week when we. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I'll try to get some of the other members that were supposed to show up. Yeah. But, uh, quite honestly, I don't think that the uh, word really got out enough. For, for every, all the 
committee members or show. That's fine. Oh. I think we, we had a good meeting here. You know what we want to try to accomplish for the town, and we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Are so, you here for the Russell School, too? The Russell School's been withdrawn. Oh, it did? Yes. Yeah, we withdrew that. Because, I mean, it's too much. Mm -hmm. We need to... Well, so the committee needs to do its work, you know, that's kind of giving them the money before they've decided what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that uh, was requested of the members of the building committee, we've done it, we've got together a subcommittee, is to actually come up with, uh, I brought this forward to you guys last year, to uh, put together, okay, what are the scenarios of, of Russell School? From, you could say from bad to worse, from demo all the way up to how, if the town used utilized the building. Mm -hmm. There's got to be something in between. Is there a partnership that we can do? So we, we ha actually have a pretty good committee together with some really good minds that have done grant work and other types of work, commercial partnerships with municipalities. Mm -hmm. So what we want to try to do is let them finish their work come up a report, get it over to the select board, and then present it to everybody and say, okay, here's, here's what we can do with the building. You guys vote on it and tell us what, what you want to do. But, and it's, it's a tough one because... Uh, I'm glad because that's the only one I really was against, and it's not because I didn't want to save the building, but... If you're gonna, my thinking was if you were gonna end up selling it or something, well, we have to pay prevailing wage. Well, so all the CPA money would be, it would cost that much more. So why wouldn't you just wait until the other person that has it and it, it's cheaper? And the argument from a lot of people well, 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 is, no, sorry, Anyways. that's the school. Yeah. <laughs> we still have two proposals to go. And oh, to we do. The, we're still. Yes. All right, thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll see you in a week. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the DPW, Chris isn't here. Mm -hmm. um, but I spoke with him and helped him work on the proposal. And what he's doing is he's hiring a uh, landscape architect to do a plan for uh, changes slash improvements to the town comp. Mm -hmm. well, before. Before the yep. select board leaves, uh, who who gave Chris the order? Did the selectmen give Chris the order to make some changes or look into the the town the com, did. town common? The town did. I mean, yeah. Who's the town? I don't know. That was that was the question. They're in charge of the. Chris is looking into changes to the common. Yeah. Well, who gave him that order? I mean, he's. Looking into things to make the common more. I don't know what his exact proposal is for this one. He's had a lot of different ideas, but kind of making it a focal point of the town. I think it's his own initiative. And it is somewhat well, of his own it, initiative. Have you guys but, su supported him? Have you done a, a discussion or a vote or anything to um, support this? Nothing official. I can always bring this up this week if you want. Yeah. To I mean, he, doesn't, it. Do he, we, he doesn't have I'm to. I'm not familiar with the exact proposal right. he's submitted. He doesn't have to get your approval. He could do a CPA submission like anyone in town. Yeah, it's like Emma but with I the did, Board of Health I is did tell him things. that yeah. he should check with you guys. Yeah, yeah. I can follow up with him, too. I'll be talking to him yeah. probably tomorrow even, so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I wasn't completely aware of what he was submitting. So, so if he's got some interesting and possibly controversial ideas. It's a, okay. Ooh, <laughs> ooh baby. He should have oh, really. so, come over with us. I know, yeah, he was over there. Yeah. We, were, yeah. we were all at the yeah. Capitol planning meeting right yeah. before this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I didn't know he was doing yeah. um, But this is, but well, he's not implementing the ideas, he's just hiring the person to, to do a plan. Do this is plan. a planning. Period. And I also spoke to him about a public meeting. Yeah. I said, if you're going to mess with the town common, you have to have a public meeting. At least one. Yeah. He said, well, we'll present to the select board. He said, not good enough. <laughs> well, it's, it, right. yeah, well, it was it traditionally the historical committee was the, the person, the group that had 
kind of answered all the questions which they would like to see done to the town common. Right, which was pretty much nothing. No, there's a whole permitting now. They came up with guidelines for the town common that you have to meet. I mean, you have to, and you have to get a permit to use it for anything. Well, that's easy. Yeah, but I meant like yeah. additions right. or, oh, okay. you know, infrastructure. Or but Chris should come next week. Oh, no, no. We definitely reach out to him. I don't know if you want to just pass it over uh, and talk about it next week, or if you want me to keep going. About no, um, it's the, we went past the deadline, and he submitted it. Yeah. So we either, if we don't, we don't, and that's it, and it dies, and, or we consider it. Well, you know? I guess I can call him tomorrow and see what happened and ask him. I mean, I'd encourage you guys to at least consider it and see if you can. I, I don't know what the idea. No, I mean, we want to see I didn't something. On that. Yeah. Something. Just don't give me twenty-five thousand and say I have a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. what committee did you work with? Wait, so he didn't supply. You guys don't have any printouts or anything like that. No, no, we just got this. Okay. Just the proposal. Yeah. Just the proposal. we just got the proposal. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And this is what. I scribbled on it. So. Oh, okay. 25000 to, to come up with some ideas of what right. to do with it. Well, I think he has somebody that he wants to use. Yeah, you Yeah. Yeah, this is... It's pretty standard. Is it going to be an underground parking garage, or...? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A fountain? Um, well, actually, we'll talk about that later. Actually, <laughs> we talked about that. Um, um, yeah. So, the non, to do the non-controversial okay. ideas first, um, to bring electrical hookups and potable water yeah. into at least one section of the town common where the uh, where you did your um, yeah we're doing it again this year too right all right, right. Yeah. 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 so you so there wouldn't be a water fountain or a, or a fountain big. fountain yeah. but there'd be <laughs> water <laughs> hookups that you could use, use, the yeah. right, 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 use okay. if there was an event okay, and electricity. Yeah, um, that would be really helpful. He talked about a gazebo. I tried to talk him into a pergola. I tried to talk him into a pergola instead of a gazebo. Well, the, the um, select board talked about a gazebo. Uh, yeah, yeah so that, the, that was one of the, the select ideas. board, but they didn't know where they were going to put it. Well, we think of the room. Tim and I had, we're not had sure. a discussion with Tim about the gazebo. He had no idea. He just came out with going to be no. 50000 No, that project wasn't that, ready. Where was it going to be right. located? I don't right. know. But that's why he wants to hire the uh, landscape architect to say, here's where it's going to be. Right. Or whatever it is. Right. But I... Uh, redo I'm the paths. Almost, redo the footpaths he wants to do. I'm almost against that. There may be people that want to do nothing on the town common. That traditionally used to be the historical right. uh, commission's attitude. It's been that way for 300 years. Should we make a... Uh, kind of a carnival out of it, or he's not or here. Nobody's here do? to answer the question, so I don't know how to. No, no but he's going to have answer some answer. idea, like yeah. bringing water in, and what's that going to do? Why are we bringing water? Right? I think you're bringing water in. Make it more usable if you do have a one day. If you have a one day event, whether it's the asparagus festival or whether it's you know those Friday night things last. Um, year for every four in a row were fantastic. There were so many people that came and just enjoyed being there and it was like nice to have a place and happy to do something. Well, how did it survive for one day? I mean, if you bring something more permanent in, it's going to be maybe for three or four days. You know, It's going to be like the circus wanted to come into town. They said, oh no, we can't come into town. Well, you know what happens with most, I mean, the commons were, you know, colonial times, and most towns, the town grew up around that common, like mm -hmm. in Amherst or in Belchertown. So when you have events there, it's disturbing businesses or it's things that close down at night. And ours is, that didn't happen. It's all homes. So that's a different, it's, it's people that will be bothered if things are there at night because they live right there. So yeah. it, you know, there is thought that has to go into how it's used and stuff. On the other hand, it's a major, wonderful piece of land that the town has, and it's nice to be able to use it for events. I well, mean, I don't think we should use it. I mean, uh -huh. uh, it's, uh, it's something that's, for 300 years, it's been the wonderful part of the community because it is open, because we haven't put a parking garage on it or have carnivals there. We used to have carnivals there. 
So and you know the, what we did during the 350 for the firemen's muster. People love that. I mean, it's the staging area after the Memorial Day parade, and it adds a nice area there. It's. Um, I mean, there are some. We don't use it much, but when we do use it, it's it's a nice stage. So. Do we need twenty-five thousand dollars for water and electrical? Well, okay. That's well, not even. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, water and electrical. I've irritated hookups. enough people today, so I think. I'm sure that the water and electrical hookups will be more than twenty-five thousand dollars. No, but this that's is, this is just this is just for the plan. And I think I think this is a good discussion. You know, we'll have that discussion if we approve it. We'll have that discussion in town meeting, mm -hmm. and if there's enough support to think about changing it in the future, then it'll pass. And then we'll have to have a second vote to actually fund the project, and you know that'll be the same argument all over again. I kind of figured that he did it on his own because the selectmen do not want to enforce the issue on parking on the town common. Mm. Right. Well, I didn't get that to his, is. I didn't get to his ideas about parking on the town. Well, common. they reseeded it and they put yeah. uh, some. Some grass over it, I mean, some hay and, and straw, and people drove all over I don't it. want to give you an aneurysm, but Chris's idea was to make it paid parking so when there were events, people would pay to park, <laughs> and that would fund the maintenance of the town common, the paid parking. And I told him that that was going to be a very interesting discussion. <laughs> so I don't know if that is going to be part of this plan or not. Uh, the uh, landscape architect will uh, decide, I guess. Mm -hmm. well, I think we've, we've got to resolve the parking on the common now before we even go ahead and do anything. Can, can all of a sudden you just park your car there, have a commuter parking, park it on the grass, and have somebody pick you up there? That may be part of the study. Yeah. What to do about I don't know. It's, it's against the bylaw. There should be no study. It's been against the bylaw for five years, and each year, well, well, if it is, I'm, <coughs> it's, uh, I don't know. Well, I would, uh, well, we haven't had a rule I yet. know why it's not being enforced, but I can't say anything. <clears throat> but if we, uh, if we do pass this along to town meeting, I would encourage you to stand up and together. speak your piece. Mm -hmm. You know? Like anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> do we have any more discussion? No. <coughs> I have a discussion on, on a different topic. On this one? No, uh, on this one. No, oh, we have one. one more to go. Okay, okay. Your historical now, commission. Now. I did not think that we were going to get to this, and so I did not make nine copies. Because oh, you're going I, was to know. Sure, I, know. I was sure. Max. I was sure we weren't going to get to this. So I only have one copy. Oh, man. It's, the, it's the historic maps. This is the deerskins? <coughs> yes, the deerskin maps. Okay, I'm <coughs> if, take, if you took a look at that. I think I sent it out in the emails. Okay. <coughs> okay, so there's two 1740 era maps in a drawer, or they were a drawer, in Tim's office. Wow. And they were encased in some sort of plastic, but nobody knew who put it in there, or what kind of plastic it was, or when it was done, or anything about them really. <clears throat> Except that they were in a safe for like, we don't know how many hundreds of years. Um, so uh, I asked for $500 to take it to the Williamstown College Conservation Center and have an assessment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the idea was that we could use CPA money to mount them and put them in the history room uh, in the new library. Mm -hmm. And then everybody could see them. Um, so the $500 was uh, approved. And I took them to the museum. And they said, wow, what great maps. What a treasure. Um, We'll assess them and uh, they get back to you. And she really struggled with what to do with these maps, mm -hmm. how to present them and to preserve them. Um, and after going back and forth and talking to other conservators, she decided the best thing we could do would be to put them back in the drawer. Um, and that's basically what the proposal is. It's uh, light cleaning, some mending, uh, removal of some previous conservation efforts, and then to put it back in special high quality plastic that's a little better than what it was in before. And 
and that's going to cost like $4,600. Uh, and not to display them and not to show them. But I wonder if we could take a really good quality photograph of them. Reproductions are not but CPA it doesn't have eligible. to be through CPA. I no, mean, it just to have somebody <coughs> see Yes. That. Yes, um, so they offered to do incredible high quality reproductions, but I took it off of the request because it's not the CPA. But so maybe it's something in the historical commission. To so think about it. Yeah, you know? if, they, if you had a price. Because um, they really are incredible. Didn't you get back something saying you couldn't put it up like a photo, like a picture, because it's going straight up and down uh, well, or something? Well, it's, it's <coughs> deer skin. Vellum, right, always wants to return to the shape that it was on the animal. Mm -hmm. And so, if you don't lay it flat between something, it morphs back into the shoulder or whatever, whatever it was. And if they were going to mount it, and one of them is two-sided, so if they were going to mount the two-sided one, you would have to stretch it within the frame, and it would just be incredibly expensive, like 10 grand. And you can't have light hitting it, I'm sure. And right, stuff. you have to put it in argon and you have to do Humidity, all that stuff. Yeah. So they said, uh, just put it back in the drawer. So I was a little disappointed. So it's going to cost us and it's cost it's gonna cost, because, because they cut it out of the plastic that it was in originally, it needs to be replaced. So it's going gonna, gonna to cost us uh, $4,250. To put it back. Bag. Put it back in the drawer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, so it's not a plastic bag. It's a no static UV, no toxicity, hermetically sealed. Hermetically yeah. sealed. yeah, I, I understand. Right, right. Wow. How do you feel about this one, Joe? Spent 500 to go to get it checked out? <laughs> <laughs> so this one didn't work out exactly the way I planned it, but that's. Yeah. And then the, the maps have been sitting up there for six months. I think we ought to take it like four thousand dollars to go to Vienna. <laughs> I saw a map from fourteen hundred yeah. of Africa in a museum in Vienna, and it was on skin, and it was looked perfect like Africa looks now, and it was you could almost read the small writing. Somehow they did it. Oh, it might be different skin it, too. It could be. It, yeah. it could dollar. be camels. If it makes yeah. you feel any better, it's more like twenty three hundred per map. Yeah. Well, what if we eBay it? How much can we get? <laughs> <laughs> not, so, uh, yeah. so, so I really hope this goes through because right now the maps are not in a conservable. Because they had to take it out of the to plastic out. to look at right, it. Right to analyze okay. it. So yeah. the cat is out of the bag. Or yes. the deer. Yes, yes, the deer is well, out of the... There well, might be a much it. cheaper price if you just want them not to clean it, not to whatever, but it does seem like if it's open now... So yeah, now yeah. 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 I'm saying 1400 um, They're Indians. So that's, the, that's, that's the, the treasure. That's a story. <laughs> they didn't even right. domesticate any <laughs> animals yet. These people nice were sailing around half the world. Photo of it. Yeah. You know, maybe... Just sneak in there and do it. Well, yeah, well, it would be nice to get in some form of the image of it you know, prior to walking wow. it up and putting it back in the safe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or so, even before they put it in the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? Well, I have to ask you, there is a line item for photo services, but I'm not sure. That's just so the the conservator you know, can look at the photo and then look at the thing they clean. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that the, uh, the really high resolution mm -hmm. Copies was, were different, more money, not allowable. Hmm. So that's the story with that one. Okay. I mean, even if we could get someone with a real good camera, like my husband, to go up before they put it in the plastic, and you know, it may not be exactly their professional view, but you well, know. I'll tell you, the work won't be done until town meeting approves it, and that's right. when. What is that? May. Thursday in May. May. So they were very nice up there. So that's okay. with that. Is the no reproductions rule like a Massachusetts rule or CPA? CPA. CPA rule. Yeah. Like no no facsimiles, no monuments, you no can't signs, digitize things. no astroturf. There's like a section of the law that says you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. It doesn't always say why. Yeah, so you, you go you online know. and see what's been approved by various other communities. Right. But that doesn't mean it's allowed. 
Mm -hmm. Just because other towns spend their money, it doesn't mean that it's a per okay. case. Does, does Historical have any money for a project to, to, do, to do the recording? They don't deal with actual things that much, right? right. Yeah. It's maybe, you know, I don't know if the Historical Society would be interested or... I'm, I'm, I'm bummed about this, but... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's well, I next? think it's All right. important. Okay, any other questions about this one? No. Nope. Okay, should we adjourn or should we finish? Let's blow through these. Uh, okay, there's the question about the extensions. Okay, there's two previously approved by town meeting CPA projects that have passed their, or are about to pass the two year limit. So mm -hmm. there's two years. Um, yeah, that we've been doing recently. Right, yeah, because we were telling. We didn't know yeah, if yeah. it, it We kind of did it one way and then another way. Okay. Kind um, one are the town hall pillars, which was the consolation project for the select board when they came for all that money for town hall. Mm -hmm. Didn't know for what exactly. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, you can't have that, but how about money for the pillars? Right. And that's another CPA project that was approved by town meeting and never uh, started. So David Nixon says he's going to get on him and he's going to make him do it. Uh, but we need an extension. Okay, and that's the 35000 yeah. yeah. That's for the pillars? Yeah. 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 That number keeps going up. Uh, well, well, we, well, the we got approved. No, no, I'm just saying that when, when my time in the billing committee, when we first started looking into that and made the recommendation to the select board, mm -hmm. then that number has gone up. Yeah, well, it was like what, 27. Yeah, well, everything goes up. Yeah, we just, history. We, we, they wanted the money for painting the town hall again. And it was like, no, I can't get Extraordinary it. amount of money. But there are some people that remember it from previous meetings. We will try to sneak it in. You can paint the town hall one time as historic preservation. But you have to start setting money aside mm -hmm. in a timely fashion. So that when it needs painting again, you can. The money they never available. have. Right. So they asked for the money again, and there were some people that did remember their promise. Great. There is a problem. So we gave the money to paint the pillars, or they needed some retouching to yeah. Yeah. to fix them. But they never did it. Right. So the time frame is out. Okay. So the money is sitting there. Well, well, yeah, I looked at the um, the Warren article. We did not give that money to any particular organization or place in town, so no one is responsible for it not happening. No, no. <laughs> so, town building committee. So Inspired. yeah, next we'll time we'll it. next time we'll do that. And then the other thing is um, the other extension is for Hopkins Fields, mm -hmm. which was delayed for many for like a year and a half because of the lawsuit mm -hmm. and some other problems. So they're actually going out to bid pretty soon. I just saw Amy in the parking lot. Um, and uh, they've, they've used some of the money. Because mm -hmm. we, we approved, uh, or town meeting approved, 400000 Yeah, know. That was the second. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and there's 389 that they need an extension on. Right. right. Since the bylaw says it automatically reverts back, mm -hmm. town meeting has to vote to, right. to, to extend. Do yeah. you want to make a, a a vote on that on this on these two items now? Uh, we could. Yes, we could. Is that a motion? I make a motion to uh, approve the two articles um, listed for the extension. Select. Should we put the thirty-five thousand? Should we put that under a certain board yeah. or committee? Let's. Uh, I, I think we should put a, another time limit. I agree with you. Additional right. two years like we have been. Well, yeah. I don't think so. I think we should just do a year because, you know, otherwise they're just going to sit on the pot for two years. Fine. <laughs> We're too, I, I, so I, you're going to put that one under one year and Hopkins under? I think one year for both. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm... Do you think the thinking. fields will be done in a year? Uh, I think... I don't think the fields will be done, but I think that they'll... Oh, actually, I have no idea. Okay, so why don't, why don't we just say... I, I think that okay, yeah, two that, years? That's a different scale. No. Know? Two years? No, let's just... Um, we could just say July 1st of 2021. 
because that way it gives us a whole town meeting cycle. If they don't spend the money between now and then, they can ask for another extension. I'm, I'm more in favor of fall meeting of 2021 because that's the building, you know, the landscaping season. But no, I'm just, just you know, out of if you want, if like I would two just, years is good. <laughs> I just say two years, yeah, two years just because, good. you know, and just well, that's what we've always done, and, and we do yeah, two uh, years. I, and I, I don't have I, a problem with yeah, that. Actually, I, I think two years isn't enough, but that's all right. Well, yeah. No, because a lot of a lot of people are coming back to us. I know. So I, last so thing I want to do is see Hopkins do another time back to us. Yeah. <laughs> two, two, four. Okay. So two more years. You yeah. Won't do that. I think it's good to keep it on a town meeting schedule because then you you aren't up in the middle between town meetings. Mm -hmm. There might be a gap between yeah. when they actually want right. those funds. Yeah. Okay. So that might be good. All yeah. right. Um, okay. So we're extending the two the pillars well, we and the Hopkins on. fields uh, for two years, which is. 2022. Right, and do you want to, do we want to say a date? Yeah, you want to say meeting. Yeah, annual town meeting. Annual town meeting, meeting of 2022. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it's uh, moved and seconded. All yep. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I did get sworn in today. Six, so I can vote. <laughs> zero. You got sworn in? Yes, oh. sworn in. <laughs> Not sworn Okay, at. so they'll be happy about that. Um, uh, we're also going to do um, the fund set asides at forty three thousand three hundred and eighty each. So we're going to do a warrant article for that, right? Okay. For yep. forty three each. Yeah, yeah forty three thousand three hundred eighty each. And uh, so I have a question about that. Why? Why is that a percentage? Ten percent. Okay. Ten percent of the total CPA revenues. So this is the housekeeping article. Yeah. 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 So for years we did thirty thousand. Yeah. Right. But that wasn't right. That was ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. got to be ten percent. I couldn't remember because yeah. we were talking about yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Where do you come 10, up with that number? Seventy. Yeah. Okay. So. And it's ten percent of of the money just for this year that we've gotten. Uh, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three. That's and that's combined uh, with the state yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I and I think it's including the. Well, I'm not sure about the interest. Interest, I think, goes into the general fund. I yeah, think. I think the interest goes into the general fund. Okay, so uh, a warrant article for the set asides forty three thousand three hundred. Four hundred thirty three thousand is how much we got without the interest. So it's, it doesn't include the interest. Okay. Um. To hear a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, uh, any other discussion? All approved, all, uh, what am I saying? All in favor. So late, thank you. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? No, six zero. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, I'm, is that one, two, three, four, five, six? Oh my goodness. Wow, he's a ball out here. Same as last week. Take the notes. <laughs> Okay, uh, I move that we dispense with the rest of the agenda and adjourn. Second. Yeah. I just had one question. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, you did have something you wanted to say. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to know, because so, I came from Capitol, and we had a big presentation all about the dike, okay? There, and, and we're looking at um, uh, shore, you know, making it a little bit stronger and, 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 and some things like that, but... We're talking about maybe extending it so that way it goes possibly maybe behind Bay Road, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so that it would protect the schools, it would protect their sewer, it will protect a lot of other things. Would that be something that could, like, in, in obviously not, a lot, most of it hopefully can come from a grant. We're looking mm -hmm. at some from capital, but do you think we could get anything from CPA on that? First of all, to Army get that Corps. past FEMA is going to be a nightmare. What about the Army Corps of Engineers? Oh, I mean, this is a, just yeah. in study right now. I'm well, just even, wondering... Even the study, why, why bother with the study? Because if you put a dike higher in Hadley, you're diverting more water to Northampton. That's not allowed. So, 
Well, I, I don't know. They have a company that, that's been doing it, in the, and they're dealing with FEMA, and they're dealing with all the agencies, and, and everybody's involved with it. It's, they've hired out. Okay, so, well, well, I, but the, right now, it's they're just talking about how much money. It's not going to get certified again through FEMA, they don't think, when they change the map, so, which would affect a lot of people, and they're, um, they have to pay flood insurance. Well, right now... FEMA has is doing a study. I went to a hearing, and what they want to do is probably expand the uh, the floodplain. Mm -hmm. And the reason they want to expand it is because FEMA is running out of money. So if they expand it, there are more people that are going to be paying into the insurance, yeah. federal insurance. Okay. So this is just going to screw up all their mapping and this has been on their study for about two and a half years. This company I think maybe is hoodwinking you a little bit. Oh I don't know. It, it sounded it was just a thought it was just That was that came out of the meeting that was the beginning of the year about uh, how should the town yes. react to global warming. Yes. And so everybody said, well we gotta strengthen the dike. Then there was discussion about, well, in, in the mid-80s, the dike protected us, but it flooded because it came backwards. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I'm assuming, yes. that's, that's where that of came out of. Yes. Yes. And uh, there's a group that says, we can get the money if you want to do it. But not all of it, and they're talking about portion of it. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. That, no way I think CPA money would be able to fund that. And I don't think that it would be a huge story. Well, you said three. That's not three three historic. Things. No, it's no. not um, par maybe, Park and Rec. Maybe the study. It may be Park and Rec because that's the best Park and Recreation we have in town, walking the dike. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly building the new dike I don't think would be no. CPA. No. Um, restoring and preserving the old dike. Maybe. Mm. That's really it's hard to know, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm. Certainly would you have to use building materials and techniques from the 1800s? Who propped, who propped you know, this up? up? No, they've been, they've, been, they've been trying to do this for a long time and they're spending all this money on these studies, like 200,000. They want to do another 200,000 looking to put another study in. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, who, yeah is the select board? Well, it starts with David and going through the select board. And, um, David would no. He didn't go to that meeting. I mean, he should have gone to that meeting because that was critical. But I, I don't know. But there, it's 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 a. Um, we'll try to get you a map of the extended FEMA, and it's not in print yet, but it'll be coming out. We well, I I, I don't know if people would really want a big dike behind the house on Bay Road. Are you going to really want that? And if, if that's if people vote that and they don't want that, then why are you going to spend all this money first? <laughs> you say, let's just well, you, not do it. Yeah. What you could do is you could raise Bay Road two feet, and that would be the dike. Well, they talked about putting it, the better thing to do is put it in front of Bay Road. But if you put it in front of Bay Road, okay, so right out almost on Bay Road, you're going to be having all these people on Bay Road looking at this big mound and they're not they're gonna be outside it so it's not even benefiting them for flood insurance. So mm -hmm. it just seemed like that wouldn't work either. So to me I'm thinking maybe this is an after CPA meeting talk. Yeah. Yes. Well I just was wondering if it was anything that you know I was thinking about it because we were doing yeah. I, I would encourage you to write the CPA commission and drop them an email and ask them if Stuart ever comes back from vacation. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So we are meeting along, next week. It's 9.30 already. Yep. All right. So same Time. bat time, same Second. bat channel. Next Monday at 7 o'clock. Yes. Right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Two weeks yes. or a week? No. Next week. Next week. Next week. Okay. Yep.